Welcome, guys! Welcome to the stream! I'm excited to play some more of this game, even though, uh, I guess it's got a mixed opinions on this case <laughs> from what I've seen. It's kind of goofy silly, though, so far, so I'm enjoying it for what it is. It's <laughs> still better than Big Top. <laughs> At least so far, I'm liking it a lot more than Big Top. <laughs> I guess it's a pretty low standard. <laughs> Welcome! Oh, yeah, uh, bad news. Uh, I don't know how to tell you guys this, but, um... This is the last stream with Chair Coon, so, um, say your goodbyes now. He will be dead. I'll be filming his, uh, Danganronpa execution pretty soon, probably. I think the new chair, his replacement, comes in on, like, Friday, so, probably Saturday. It's, you know, just wish him, wish him well. He'll be going to a better place. He'll be going to a better place. Oh, Nuck, what's up? Good to see you. It's been a while since I've seen you. Hope you're doing well. Thanks, guys, for stopping by. <laughs> it's so sad. You guys will like the new chair, maybe. I don't know. Also, okay, okay, I want to specify something about the new chair before it comes. Because I don't want y'all to think that TikTok shop got to me. It almost got to me. It kind of did, I guess. Okay, so this is a stupid crisscross chair that's been, like, trending. And, like, I really wanted it, but I was like, dude, I hate TikTok Shop so much. Because that shit's added, like, it's, I get those ads constantly. Like, literally every other ad is, like, crop tech, crisscross chair, a little stair stepper thing. And I'm like, stop it! So I, like, just try to scroll through as fast as I can. But my friend got one. And so I got a recommendation off of her because, you know, I tried out her chair. And then I bought mine from not TikTok shop. So it's not the TikTok chair. Just so you guys know. <laughs> Just so you guys are made aware, it's not the TikTok chair. Man, now y'all are gonna fucking hate the new chair. And he, she hasn't done anything wrong. Okay, let's uh <laughs> Okay, let's um uh, go ahead and talk. Guys, it's gonna be really fun though, because I got a Monokuma onesie and <laughs> A hammer, and I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna execute this guy, <laughs> Danganronpa style. So it'll be beautiful. You guys will love it. We'll we'll have a good time. <laughs> Does the new chair have six pack abs? You'll just have to wait and see. <laughs> Tune in next week <laughs> to see. Oh man. Okay, what were we doing? I don't really remember. Oh god. Oh no. Now I'm stressed. I remember to the vitamin state. Oh yeah, we were talking to this old angry guy. Oh, is somebody new here? Joey hates Sharita Khan. Don't hate her, okay? She, she's she's nice, guys. You haven't met her yet. She's beautiful. She's so cute. She doesn't have armrests that are broken like this guy. Her leather is not peeling. Oh man. Oh yeah, I did see a digital circus coming soon. I'm excited. Um, the old guy is not here anymore. Drat, and I still have some unanswered questions for him. Okay, this bike is new, right? Looks like a Barbie's bike or something. A scooter, huh? Who'd leave this right in the middle of a park like this? The wheel guard and the light are busted. Oh, that's sketchy. I guess it must have been in an accident. It's totally wrecked. Whoa, 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 whoa. Who is this? <laughs> oh my god, they're still going! Oh my god, that breath support! <laughs> okay! Oh, what the fuck?! <laughs> what is that?! What is that?! <laughs> oh my god, it's like a phoenix... <laughs> took a six hour nap in a tanning bed! <laughs> is this his... Is this his, uh, imposter guy? <laughs> he does kinda look like him, right? Just, uh, yak is, uh, fine. Hey, what kind of voice do I give this man? <laughs> hey, what'd you think he's doing with my bike? Why does he have such a cute bike? Uh, no, I was just... You been messing with my new ride? Is that what she's been doing? Uh, new ride? Is that kind of an old model? Go on, you's gonna pay for this. It, it wasn't me! I was just passing by! Aiden, who's the one? Tech covered my saddle and crap, huh? Who took a dump on my bike? You's gonna pay, you catch my drift. No, wait a second, I'm not a pigeon. Oh my god, that's pigeon poop. Oh my god, what is up with this guy? Uh, so when you say Mitch voice, oh god, but I feel like, 
<laughs> I can try it. Phoenix Red. <laughs> he does, uh, he does, he do be, he do be Phoenix Red. Ooh, wise guy, eh? I had to beat you so hard, I feel like you was, was smooching the, smooching the, what does that even mean? It'll feel like you was a smooching the express train. Uh-oh. You better watch your back. This ain't over. I'm gonna round out a group of lawyers and then you's gonna pay. <laughs> the lawyer's me, dressed up as you. Oh, I like that he's showing his, <laughs> he showed his, his chest too. <laughs> and also, take a look at these titties. <laughs> That's how you know I mean business, dog. Um, actually, I'm a lawyer myself. Was just say. Uh, I'm Phoenix Wright. <laughs> what is up with this guy? What is he on? Phoenix Wright, you saying you? Phoenix Wright? Um, I am. So you're a wise guy too, huh? Cause I'm... <laughs> okay. I'm Phoenix Wright, the one and only. You think that he would at least lie in front of, like, the real Phoenix Wright, not... <laughs> Just straight up admit that he's been, you know, stealing you's identity, stealing your identity. What? Out of my way, I gotta curse. What if he just actually believes he's Phoenix, right? Maybe so. Maybe he's just crazy. He's gone. Surely that guy wasn't my phony. Why would people think that was me? He wasn't anything like me. Guess I better make a note of the scooter. Scooter added to the car ring. This case is so stupid. <laughs> I can't hate it, though. <laughs> so far, I don't hate it. It's, <laughs> it's just so silly. Written by my phony, the wheel guard is all the way smashed up. I wonder who did this. Cow, pathetic. Who's that? Oh. Oh, it's you. I think I gave him, like, a old man McGuckick <laughs> voice or something. A few threats from a little brat like that. And you look like a pigeon that's got seeds in its eyes! <laughs> like the ones I throw seeds in! Haven't you, have you been here the whole time? I was in that strawberry. I had some thinking that that is my house! More like you had some cowering to do. Okay, you know this guy? Oh yeah, he did flirt with Armstrong. Alright, uh, fake. Well, I dislike the silliness of this case, unfortunately. I could see that. <laughs> I think it's just because I'm going into it with, like, very low expectations. It doesn't bother me. It's, I don't know. I guess if Phoenix right. I feel like Ace Attorney kind of leans into the goofiness sometimes. I guess it's kind of similar with, like, Danganronpa, but I do feel like I get, like, more mad at, like, silliness in Danganronpa cases for whatever reason. Who did Cherokoon murder to get him an execution? My back. <laughs> he murdered my back. That's what he murdered. My posture is horrible just because just because of him. So that's who he's getting that's who he's getting executed executed for. I should like hunt the whole time I'm doing <laughs> doing the execution too. So you guys know what he did. What he did and who he killed. And thank you, someone unknown. Appreciate ya. Are you a regular at that restaurant? It's just that if you dislike it so much, why would you keep going there? Sir? There you are, you filthy p <laughs> You want food? I'll take that! Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He has like a thingy midjig, right? Didn't somebody else have one? I think it was um the French guy. I knew it. This old guy has got something to hide. But what could it be? Hmm. We got the Magitana back. Maga, Maga, Magatama. I just see what, uh, let's see what I need. Boom! <laughs> Chair Coon killed Fuda. I think my microphone killed Fuda, honestly. I gotta replace this, too. It's It's been too long working with the Yeti mic. Trey Beyond Regular. It's time you told me the truth. Why are you a regular at the restaurant that you dislike so much? It's right, because of the girls, right? He's a creep, isn't he? Isn't it obvious? People only have one reason to go to restaurants to eat! Uh, to eat the food there? Shit! Is that the whole truth? What do you mean? I don't think you go to that restaurant for the food at all. You insolent bread, how dare you accuse me? What proof have you got? I can tell that you, that not you or anyone else in the world would go to that place for food. I don't know if I really have anything for this yet. 
Come on, special. Oh, okay. Maybe actually the lunch special. Until they're not you nor anybody else in the world go to that place for food because this food sucks ass! The proof is in the pudding, or in this case, the lunch menu. That's the twin tea set! The food at Travion is terrible and expensive. You're wrong. It's cheap! What? I'm rich. <laughs> I inherited money when I was a boy. Yeah, I'm stinking rich. I haven't done a jot of work since I was born other than feeding pigeons. What a load of crock. The taste's another story, but the price, it's nothing to me. So you're saying that you go there because you've got money to burn. Exactly, I got so much cash, I go for a swim in my money vault every day. I'm like a Scrooge McDuck. Unfortunately, that's a lie. What? You don't have to money to burn, you're flat broke. Is it because you have the job? I don't actually know if that's a... Uh... Article from... Picked up from a bench. Thrown away by the old man. Oh yeah, literally the job listing thing. Okay, maybe I actually do have everything for this right now. Take that! This is yours, right? My magazine! Why would a rich retiree be looking for a job? Uh, I was... Uh, oh, so what? Oh, we got one. So I was looking for a job. I'm buying a lot at the moment. I need spending. Is he wasting all of his money at that stupid cafe? Oh, I don't go to that restaurant for food. I go for the cappuccino. Yeah, I think you mean a cappuccino. Anyways, how much does a cappuccino cost there? Eight. Jesus Christ. Eight dollars. I can't even tell if that's like normal anymore or not. I feel like coffee is like super duper overpriced. Those had better be some golden beans. What's your problem? You think a poor man would be better off drinking dishwater, do you? Is that it? No, I wasn't thinking that. Uh, I was. I was. The Phoenix wasn't. I was wondering if the coffee there is really that great. No, it's not. But, but anyways, yes. That place is free newspapers to read every day. Newspapers? Exactly. They don't want me hanging around at home, so I go there. <laughs> They don't want you hanging around at home. <laughs> His wife, get the hell out of here, you creepy old man. There are no free papers to read a Trey Bion. Trey Bion. Um, article, maybe I have to go back to Trey Bion. Trey Bion. Because uh, uh, I remember looking at the magazines, but I don't know if I really have anything. I remember I got this, but was that? I don't think that was from... Uh, Trayvion, right? I think that was just like, or was it? I don't remember. Eh, whatever. I'll just come back later. I don't think I have enough evidence yet. Let's see if I can get some more clues. I think, uh, I could also maybe do, uh, the other guy too, since I think he has, um, Okay, here we go. Direct full of fashion magazines, and they're all in <laughs> all in French? <laughs> oh yeah, I'm sure old man McGuckick is fluent in French. Ugh, all the clothes in these are absolutely atrocious. You just don't have style. You just don't have style, Phoenix. Some of them have been circled in red. I really hope Mr. Armstrong is not thinking of buying those. Um, he is and he's gonna slay. Excuse you. There's a bunch of little trinkets on a shelf by the door. I bet Mr. Armstrong collected all of these personally. Oh, go see Gumshoe? Okay. The tension center, and then I go the criminal affairs. Okay, here we go. Yeah, the sport newspaper. That's what it was. Yeah. It's like I remember getting something from there, but it's been a while. Hey, you're just in time. What is it, Detective Gumshoe? The lab got back to me about that newspaper you gave me. You must be in the sports paper with a memo memo scribbled on it. So, what did they say? Did the analysis turn up anything? They said the doodle was written by the victim, Glenn Elg. No doubt about it. Okay. I expected as much. The victim took the paper with him to the restaurant on the day of the murder. That's our best interpretation of the facts at the moment. Sports paper refilled, refiled into the court record. Okay, cool. Damn. MC Bomber. I get the feeling I've heard that name somewhere before. Oh well, I guess it'll come back to me. Don't forget to report back with me whenever 
with whatever you find in the restaurant, okay, pal? Since when did I start taking orders from Gumshoe? <laughs> Although, I get the feeling that there's something I need to show him. Okay. Uh, the scooter? I don't know. <laughs> it's like I can't remember. <laughs> it's been too long. Was it uh, this? Have I showed him this yet? I wasn't at the trial myself, but I asked this one detective. I know how your defense was. Oh no, I think we did do this. So you said you suck so much you're trying to get Maggie found guilty. Um. Oh, I guess this. Maybe? There we go. You got one of those aroma bottles too, huh? Oh, well, this one doesn't smell. Huh, I don't get you. This was mixed in with all the other aromatherapy bottles, but it's not the same. It doesn't even look the same, wouldn't you agree? A cologne bottle that doesn't smell, huh? Smells like a skunk to me! Mind let me borrow that bottle for a while? I want to send it to the lab for analysis. The victim was poisoned, so the contents of this bottle are pretty important. Small bottle given to the detective, Gumshoe. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, he needs to check in and see if it's poison. I was like, it is kind of sad. Armstrong does seem a little sussy. I had a hunch that there was something funny about that chef. You suspect John Armstrong. I've got that guy's number. I know what his secret is. Ooh, wait, twist, plot twist. Okay, what if fake Phoenix Wright got Maggie found guilty because he's in a relationship with Armstrong and he's trying to protect his husband from getting the guilty sentence. So that was why he pretended to be Phoenix and get Maggie found guilty. <laughs> That's the twist. I got this guy's number. I know that what a secret is. That must be the same secret Gumshoe was talking about before. I guess I'd better fill you in on the details. About this Armstrong guy's secret, I mean. Oh. Okay, you know? Armstrong's secret. <laughs> like, I think he might be gay. <laughs> I don't think that's a secret, Gumshoe. <laughs> you ever had a lunch at Trey Beyond, pal? Um, <laughs> unfortunately. So how was it? To put it nicely, it was inedible. Hey, don't worry about being nice around me, pal. You and I both know the reason that place is so empty is because of the food. I mean, the place is clean, he's got a girl like Maggie as a waitress, so... Yeah, I guess it's probably the food. The real scoop on the guy is that he's up to his ears and dead. Oh, interesting. Really? How much does he owe? This is a copy of his loan contract. He's about half a- oh, wow. Half a million in the red. Half a million? <laughs> He's still just making all those little cologne bottles. <laughs> Are we taking dollars? Talking dollars? Yeah, if he wasn't, if it was Sterling, he'd really be in trouble. Sorry, that figure just took me by surprise. Yeah, this case is full of surprises. And I'd be willing to bet that chef's got something to do with most of them. That's my hunch. Sean's loan contract added to the court record. Sean's death is half a million dollars. The owner of the loan is t <laughs> Tinder Linder. It's kind of a weird name. Okay, interesting. I don't know if there's anything else to present to him. Probably not. Nah. Okay. I guess we can move on somewhere else. I don't know if we can go to Tinder Linder, but I guess I'll be able to go back to, um, whatchamacallit, the old guy. Très bien. Okay, nothing here. Okay, let me try to finish the old man's thing, I guess, since it seems like we might be able to now. Let me save, though, first, just in case. Why does it sound like boss music? <laughs> Not old man McGuckick! I don't really know exactly how the, cause I don't know if it really said anything about the magazine being free or not. Okay. Da -da 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 -da. But I feel like it's probably what it wants me to use. Nobody would go to that place for food in the world. How are you guys doing? You guys have a good week? You're flat broke. Cause you need a job. Get a job, old man. 
It's only broke like one lock. Better be golden beans. For the magazines. Sorry, sir. There are no free papers to read at Trey Bion. Sports paper. Is this really it? Okay. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Take a look at this. What is it? It's a newspaper I found behind the magazine rack at Trey Bion. So. So what of it? This was the only paper there, and it's dated more than one month ago. Okay, that was literally the only paper. I guess everything else is like fashion magazines. What? Do you see what I'm getting at here? The restaurant doesn't get newspapers. This is this just is just one that a customer happened to leave behind. Ah! Oh God! Tell me, why are you so determined to hide the truth? I'm not hiding anything. I'm going to have to put this guy out of his misery. Listen, the real reason- <laughs> just like shoots him right there. The real reason why he goes to- go so much to Trey Beyond is- I guess Maggie is probably the reason, right? The waitress at Trey Beyond was found guilty of murder thanks to the phony me. Take that! Take that! <laughs> what are you asking me about that girl for? <laughs> she was the waitress at Trey Beyond. Oh! Therefore, the answer to the mystery of why an old man would drink expensive coffee at a terrible restaurant is the waitress! Oh no! But I don't recognize that face! And you're probably telling the truth here because you weren't looking- Oh god! Jesus! <laughs> oh no! Ew! Because <laughs> you weren't looking at the girl's face. He got me! But her outfit! Go, but that's a very nice way to say that, Phoenix. <laughs> I don't know if it was really the outfit he was uh, consuming, though. That's the truth, isn't it? You became a regular at the restaurant because of the waitress's uniform. Because <laughs> you're a pervert. That uniform is all you can think about, isn't it? <laughs> oh, I can't take it. To you, that waitress was your... Enough, please! No more! Ugh! Stop saying that word! Stop saying waitress! Stop it! Stop it! <laughs> I had a feeling, but, you know. <laughs> you know. It always uh, is extra gross when it's uh, confirmed. You weird pervert. How old is Maggie? Now that I think about it, too. She's like in her 20s, right? 23? Yeah, he's still, he's still weird for that. Um, sir. Yes, it's true! I was there for the young girl! Fine, I'm a dirty, wicked, sinful old man! As long as you admit it. Not actually, no, you're still- <laughs> I still don't like you, I don't mean it like that. Even I'll get one of those lousy cups of Java Ke I even get one of those lousy cups of Java Chino every time for eight dollars! All because the servant girl punished me, lock me up! Really, that's not, not what I'm here for. You'll be the same another 20 years and you're, Jesus Christ, you'll understand what it's like. You'll know how painful it is to be an old man like me. No, really, listen, sir. Stop calling me that. I have a name, you know, boy. Respect, show some respect, hmm? I'm Victor Kudo. Sorry, Mr. Kudo. Victor Kudo? I'm trying to think of, um... What kind of pun that would be? I don't know. I'm kind of drawing a blank. You, you young ones think you know it all, don't you? Well, I'm not saying another word. Did somebody say he's 40? He's not 40. Come on. 40 times two, maybe. I will let. I won't tell you anything more. But we already broke your psyche locks. This guy was in the restaurant at the time of the incident. Which means I have to hear his testimony, one way or another. Huff! I don't believe this. I even broke his psyche locks and everything. I guess I'll have to try to get him when he's in a better- <laughs> I broke his psyche locks and I still gotta wait for him to be in a good mood? What the fuck? <laughs> what the hell? Okay, let me present this to Maya. Does she have any opinions on this? About this. <laughs> Sorry, Nick, I'm head empty. I'm a waitress now. I got a pile of work waiting for little- Why are you just standing here then? I got so much work. <laughs> so much. Actually... Do we have his profile? 68. Okay, y'all were saying he was 40. I was like, hell no. Ain't no way. <laughs> Ain't no way that man is 40. Anybody in the kitchen? Nope. 
Um, I don't know what I'm supposed to do now. Um, guess we go back to detention. Nope. Criminal Affairs Department? Really? What am I supposed to do? To get him in a better mood? Do I have to give him something to get him in a better mood? Unless I can just try to present some stuff. I just assumed he was gonna like get mad and be like, I don't wanna see the papers! Sit him on! I feel like you guys said the judge was 42. I think you guys are lying. <laughs> Okay, let's try to present some stuff. Why not? Oh, oh my god, he's not. Ha, hum! Here you go, boy! How does pigeon feed sound to you? This wasn't exactly what I was hoping to get out of this guy. He's not gonna give me shit. Oh god. Do I gotta give him like a picture of Maggie or something weird? Mm. I'm trying to think. I'm not really sure. Is there anywhere else to go to right now? Hmm. I guess, um, maybe I should show some more stuff to... Oh yeah, I guess I don't really show everything to, um... Let me see. I didn't show everything to, um, Gumshoe yet. Oh, Gumshoe give you a clue if you present Kudo's profile. Uh, okay, nice. I'll do that then. I always forget about the profiles. He looks like one of those grouchy old man types. Yeah. That's okay, though. I don't mind guys like that. But if he's involved with this case somehow, that's a different story. Uh, sure. <laughs> he's also pining for your crutch. <laughs> if you want to get information on a guy like that, you're gonna have to find a weakness and try to get under his skin. Okay, well, we already got a weakness, right? His weakness. I, I wonder what that might be. Okay, I think we kind of already <laughs> established that, but whatever. Let me see if I can present this stuff to you. It's for half a million dollars, pal! That's, um... Half a million dollar bi- That's a lot of money! What was the um in there for? Is there really that much money tied up in this case? I can't give you an answer on that, pal. Not without the case file in front of me. But I'll tell you this. That Armstrong guy would have done anything for the cash. He was desperate, you know. I was like, is there, like... I don't know, some kind of motivation? Like, I don't really know too much about, like, insurance or things like that, but I know, like, at least people say, like, I don't know, there's, like, cases where people, like, burn their houses down to try to get, like, you know, money from their insurance company. Could you do something like that for a murder at, like, a restaurant you own? Like, oh, we're out of business now because, like, a murder happened, so, like, my insurance can give me money <laughs> to, like, help pay off my debt. Is that a thing that happens? It was, like... Because I don't really know exactly what the point of killing someone in his restaurant would be if it's not for, like, insurance money, if that's kind of the case. He was desperate, you know? No, I don't, but I think I sort of get the picture. Uh, I guess I can show him the spike. What do you make of this? Sorry, pal. All I can think about is Maggie at the moment. Oh, she's just so beautiful. Okay, I guess we'll go back to the old man. Maybe that's all I needed to know. Do, 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 do. The judge looks seven to me. <laughs> what? The judge is only three months old. <laughs> that is so true. <laughs> okay. Um, still no weakness. I mean, his weakness kind of is Maggie, so maybe if I present her. Oh, God dang it. <laughs> oh my God, this fucking old man. Okay. Um. Hmm. Present himself? <laughs> yeah, I might need another hint. Uh, think of who we know what... Who we know that has a special interest currently. But I think I already showed him a picture of her, right? I think I already did that. Yeah. Oh, 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 <laughs> oh, 
we supposed to present Maya to him? And he'll be like, oh, hot dog. There's another pretty waitress there now. <laughs> okay. I think people are saying to talk to Maya first. <laughs> I guess I can uh, do that. Oh, God. He's so creepy. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Maybe, um... I'm gonna profile Maybe we'll present his profile to her. Oh, it's the old man. He's still feeding the pigeons. Ah! Oh god, this is what we're supposed to do. Ew! Yeah, he fed me as well. I gotta. Maya, will you please flirt with this old man so we can get information on this case? Ew! Yeah, he fed me as well. I got a bunch of those seeds in my eyes. Oh, ouch! Hey, Maya, would you mind coming with me? <laughs> oh, God. Would you mind coming with me for a while? Huh, me? Why? There's something I really want to... <laughs> you should at least tell her what you're trying to do. <laughs> you should get her to consent. <laughs> I really want to ask that old man. Just stand there and let him ogle at you. Sure, okay, I'll get changed. No. <laughs> Keep the uniform on. Can you go like that? Um, I guess? Oh god. Oh god! Oh no! <laughs> oh Jesus. Oh Jesus, okay. Let me get a, let me get a sip of coffee before this scene. Oh, what is it? With Ace Attorney and creepy old men? <laughs> Why is there so many creepy old men in these games? Um, sir... Um, you again? Um... Um... Well, well... Uh, I see... Um, Nick is... Oh no, poor Maya! Why would you do this to her face? Is this why you wanted to bring me here? Oh god. Thank you, Dan Gaming Fan. I see you met Tiger. Remember to give him a Brooklyn Gangster accent. I was trying, man. I probably need a little bit more practice, but he's pretty slay so far. Is that his name, Tiger? Go get him, Tiger. I guess he does have a tiger on his jacket, too. Thanks for the donation. Appreciate ya. His eyes are burning into me. It's okay. I think it's going. Is it okay? Is it okay, Phoenix? I think it's going pretty well. Ah! Huh? You're... Oh, you're still just a little child. Run along and play on the slide, all right? Um, play on the slide? So he's not simping for her? Uh, I think that's okay. Oh, we were so close. Just a little more and he would have spilled. Ha, ma, ma. What the fuck? Pigeon, pigeon, cow! Oh, is he calling at the birds? How can we crack this guy? Um, excuse me, please. No! Is she gonna change into me? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> is that where this is going? Okay. Well, at least I can respect him for that. At least, yeah, at least he has some morals. <laughs> Quad, I, can't you see I'm feeding the pigeon? Oh, here we go! <laughs> here we fucking go! <laughs> Mia! Uh, well... If you don't mind, sir, I'd really love to talk with you. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> oh my god. Oh yeah! Look at his face now too! Yes, yes, I'm certainly a Victor, Victor Kudo! Even from beyond the grave. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, at least he wasn't uh, doing it over my, uh, at least. What you saw about the incident. You mean the man who died after drinking the Javachino? It's like he's a different person. It was quite a shock, even for me. He was a strange looking boy. <laughs> a Vegeta cosplayer, some might say. The girl took the job of chicken over to him, you see? And what was the was the customer alone? Definitely, he was the only person at that table. Then he took one sip of his job of chicken and... And... And he said something like, WARG! And then he collapsed, dead. Oh, how terrifying! She just 
playing with him. You are so good at listening, aren't you? <laughs> the bare minimum. <laughs> yeah, basically. The least creepy creep in his attorney. I know, I was like, I don't know whether I should be happy. <laughs> like, he's still a creepy asshole, but like, comparison to the others that we've seen in this game so far, he is the least creepy of the creeps. <laughs> So congratulations, I think. You're so good at listening, aren't you? I'll tell you anything, whatever you want to know. <laughs> he certainly seems to be telling the truth now. But it looks like Mr. Kudo didn't see this other man. Oh my god. Trebion. Do you like the food at Trebion? Well, of course, I'm really quite a sophisticated man. I love it when the chef spits in the food. I was a young businessman once, you know, I'm rich. Well, I used to be. I set up a casino in London. Really, how interesting. Eating the food at that restaurant really takes me back to my days in France. Oh, what a lovely story. She is, she is too good at this. London's in England, not France. That's what I was thinking too. I was like, I guess, gonna take it a train, but it's like not really that close. <laughs> thank you, Dustparta. Yo, yo, sorry I'm late. Hope you're having a great day, Weeby. Oh, thank you so much. Hope you're uh, having a good day too. And thank you, nobody out of the ordinary. He's still gross for this. I agree with that. <laughs> he's, yes, yeah, super, he's still super gross for this shit. It's just like, it's pretty bad. <laughs> Pretty bad how low the bar is in Ace Attorney. <laughs> oh yeah, France is wonderful. I'd love to show you around. <sighs> I'd love to show you around the city of London and France sometime. Yeah, let's do that without any job, huh? Huh, buddy? It's too much. I can't take it. I want... What do you want? Don't, I don't answer that. I don't want to know what you want. I don't want to know what you want. I can't take it. I want... France! <laughs> Mia's probably like, can I leave now? I can't believe Mia's laughing at the guy. Oh my god. Okay, Trebion customer. You visit Trebion a lot, don't you? Of course, I mean, yes. I'd like to come and see you there. <laughs> really? Oh, you flatter me so. The owner would be delighted to welcome you, I'm sure. Be careful of that chef, my dear! Okay, he doesn't like the chef. The chef, you mean Mr. Armstrong. That's right, the man's an ex-con! Oh! Oh yeah, well I guess he does owe like 500k or, or yeah, yeah, 500k. He's an ex-con! Oh, Armstrong's- But he's just a little guy! I'm so sick of this Armstrong slander. Why is everybody hating on my little guy? Whatever did Armstrong do? Oh no, those eyes! I, I can't take this! Mia's really got this guy eating out of her hand. <laughs> I was like, I feel like she's done this before for previous cases. <laughs> she is beautiful, so I guess... I guess it is an edge, you know, to use that for your, uh... Use that privilege for, uh, getting information out of people. He steals things from his customers. Oh, from his customers. Gloves, handkerchiefs, little things, mainly. <laughs> Selling the gloves and handkerchiefs online on eBay. One day I, I will make back that 500k five dollars at a time. Why are people only paying a dollar on these used gloves? It's so weird. He is a pop pop pilfler or popular. So you be careful around him, my dear. Are you sure about this? Of course he was arrested for it once. I was there when it happened, having my job at Chino. He really is a regular. <laughs> Every single day. Let me write you a little haiku about it. Uh, haiku? A Japanese poem, I'll explain all you need to know about that chef. Okay, convicted before a wicked man or woman, repeat offender. Wait, is he like not... <laughs> Is he, is he not sure if Armstrong's a man or a woman? Is that why you wrote that? Uh, if he takes anything again, you let me know. If it's not too expensive, I'll buy you a replacement. <laughs> so that's where all of his money's gone. He couldn't do a poor guy. He couldn't do enough for me. Okay, Phoenix. That's about as much as I can. That's about as much as I can fucking handle of this creep. Thanks, Mia. We got some really important information thanks to you. Honestly, 
I can't believe Maya called me for something like this. Okay, so it was Maya who called her. I can't- I was like, I think I do kind of remember that, where it was like, um... They had to, uh, whatchamacallit, like, Maya has to be the one to summon her. I guess it's about- <laughs> Maya was like, I'm taking that uniform off! I did not like the way that guy was looking at me, so... So I'm done, I quit this job. Thank you, nobody had the ordinary, thanks for being a member for, wow, 24 months. Mia came so Maya could be spared from the screen. Oh my god, she probably would success. Please help me. I guess it's about time to wrap up today's investigation. Had enough of being a waitress. Um, yeah. Plus, no one came to the restaurant. Oh, la la la! Mademoiselle Maya, no! Oh, can you leave me like this? Uh, um, I am sorry. That reminds me. Oh, yeah, he has a psyche lock too. Mr. Armstrong had a psyche lock. Or three, didn't he? I'm going to have to break those. <laughs> they can never make me hate you, Armstrong. Mr. Armstrong, I hope you won't mind, but I'd like to have another word with you. Uh, volunteers! Of course! Okay, let's go ahead and save. Oh, is he gonna be upset when we- Don't- Okay, don't blame me for this, Armstrong. I love you, and I definitely- I think you're innocent in the owing 500k thing. But it's just Phoenix. Phoenix is making me do it. Okay. Oh no, he looks shit! Phoenix! Ugh. Don't you dare be mean to him, my boy! Maggie's motive. What was happening? I do not like this horrible feeling. I have to know the truth. What happened that day? Oh no, why are you making him so upset? Look at him, he's just a little guy. Thank you, Dan Gaming fan. You have to admit, Mia looked great in that. Yes, she did. <laughs> yes, she did. Mia's so gorgeous, man. I love her. Alas, alas, I would confess everything. Just don't hurt me. Oh, well, uh, that was a new world record. It was a lottery ticket! A lottery ticket? Oh. La man who died here, and a lottery ticket! For half a million dollars! Okay, so did he... So he saw that the guy won half a million dollars, and he was like, Boyfriend! <laughs> Uh, go kill this man so I can get the money! Maybe... Half a million! Oui, but after law incident, this ticket... It disappeared! Who could have ta- Who would need $500? That's so crazy! Who could have done this? The ticket disappeared! This was la motive that la prosecution gave for Maggie. This said that she poisoned the man to get the half a million dollar lottery ticket. Oh my god. Homie really just had his lottery ticket like spread out on the table. <laughs> Homie, take that home and hide it, bro. Why didn't you tell me about this sooner? My the lords. You've been trying to hide this information about the lottery ticket from me. You don't want to know the reason why. No, no, sir. You doubt me, but I have confessed to you everything I know. Mr. Armstrong, the half a million dollar lottery ticket. I think I know who took it. I think the winning... T <laughs> no, don't make me do this, Phoenix. <laughs> don't make me do this to him. Don't make me accuse the one that I love. Ah, oh, damn it. Oh no, he's so sad again. Mr. Armstrong. I, like, okay, this is kind of homophobic, Phoenix. Like, he's just, he's doing what he needs to do in life to get ahead. And like, I don't blame him for that. I bet he asked nicely, what was his name? He asked Glenn Elg nicely for the lottery ticket, but then Glenn wouldn't give it to him because he was homophobic. So then, Jean had to do what he had to do. And he slayed, as he should. Oh! Wow, that is one piercing str- this, this leaves combust? Even for a man like him. My Spurkoy, huh? Why, you have no evidence. I am not- What the fuck? 
<laughs> okay, it's like a wrong case. I am not a messy mask. I'm not the kind of person who steals the property of others. <laughs> Sorry to disappoint you, Mr. Armstrong, but I have evidence to the contrary. I present you proof you've stolen from others in the past. John's death is dead as half a million dollars. Owner of this is Tinder Linda. <laughs> Take that! Ooh, perhaps a duck would be nice, a terrine, maybe? Oh. Really? What? That was not it? Sorry. I was just thinking about my- I was just thinking about my lunch menu, Terrine de Canard. What do you think? Oh, I kind of thought- huh. That sounds lovely. Hello, is it wrong, monsieur? I must go buy la ingredients. I guess my evidence is a bit of a lame duck. Okay. Oh, okay, I'm stupid. It was the high cue because I was talking about him stealing. Not the- I was like, he probably stole. <laughs> Whatever. Convicted before a wicked man or woman repeat offender. Take that! It was this a poem? Almost sure you know me so well, I adore poems. Please read it and put some feeling into it. Convicted before a wicked man or woman, repeat offender. I'm sorry to have to bring it up, Mr. Armstrong, but you have been arrested for stealing from your customers before, haven't you? Mon dieu! Les mensonges! You are the liar! You deny it. Do not make la false accusations, s'il vous plaît! Do you have any proof? I want to see la contestable proof that I have ever stolen from one of my customers. From one of his customers? It's not now. Um. Would that be it? Maybe now? Imbecile! Imbecile! <laughs> you are an imbecile! What are you singing? It's just one of my favorite chansons. It's called Imbecile. It is French. Come on, sir. Sing together with me. Imbecile. <laughs> okay. It was worth it for the roast. Imbecile. Imbecile. Oh, uh, Shang's definitely stolen from his customers before. I just need to find the right evidence to prove it. So you, do you have any proof? I want to see law incontestable proof. That I've ever stolen from one of my customers. Dude, that old man is so fucking homophobic too for writing this being like, oh, make it a w wicked man or a woman. Like, <laughs> call him a woman just because he's like flamboyant. It's like, that's fucked up. Uh, do we have anything for this? I feel like we don't. Something of. Oh! That is true! He stole this before! Take that! It seems old habits die hard, Mr. Armstrong. Also, this thing is worthless! It was Izette. It's my Magitama. And I found it in your kitchen. No! Wow, that scream just about broke some windows. Ooh, wee wee. I have a weakness for la trinket a la figurines. My, and it just slips out. I cannot stop it. You've stolen- You've stolen handkerchiefs, gloves, and other things from your customers, right? Oh, oui. It is la truth. I am just a timid little girl inside, monsieur. A timid little girl. Besides, this time it was not a last small trinket, oui. It was a 500k. Mas no. Why would I steal it? I have no need for such money. Really now? Okay, finally I can use it. Oh, monsieur, what is it? Isn't it true that you're in some pretty serious trouble? And that you're in desperate need of a large amount of cash? Okay. <laughs> Finally, I can use this! The restaurant is deep in the red, isn't it? Kleptomaniac? Oh, yeah, well, Maya's a kleptomaniac, too. They can relate. This restaurant is deep in the red, isn't it? Ah! Oh. You have a loan, to the tune of half a million dollars. That lottery ticket would have wiped your debts. I think he's picking at the flower too. Gah! Well, Mr. Armstrong, what do you have to say for yourself now? Oh, oh, oh! Yay, we did it! Unlock successful. Maggie's motive. Mr. Armstrong, you said the victim had a winning lotto ticket for half a million dollars. 
How did you know he had something like that in the first place? The man, he was listening to La Radio with his earpiece. Oh, Maggie said something about that too. <laughs> fucking scouter, dude. <laughs> I cannot get over the fact that he has a fucking scouter on. I don't know if any of you guys watch Curtis Connor, but I was watching his newest uh, YouTube video. He was doing, um, he was trying like old vintage products and there was like this one that was like a portable computer. You could like wear the keyboard on it and then I think it had like the screen. You could have it like in your eye. I think unfortunately he didn't get that version, but it looks so fucking goofy. <laughs> That's what I'm imagining him using right now. He had that like on a strap on computer set. All of a sudden, he exploded, yes, half a million, he shouted. Okay, so he opened the ticket at the restaurant and then he like freaked out. Oh man, that'd be so like that'd be so exciting, but I feel like <laughs> you gotta keep quiet about that stuff, man. It's kind of crazy. I feel like um so much like bad stuff happens to people who win lotto tickets too. That's kind of like a thing. We in had all his tickets spread out on the table. I was so desperately in need of money, so I put the poison in his coffee. No, 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 no! Oh no, you naughty man! I simply upped myself to one of his tickets! Um, what? Okay, so he's gonna admit to stealing the ticket, but not necessarily poisoning the coffee. I'm glad you like- guys love Curtis too, he's one of my uh, favorite YouTubers. Him and Danny and Drew, those like my top- <laughs> my top three. <laughs> I thought to myself, por que pas? He had so many of them! Yeah, but only one of them was the winning ticket, right? How could you do that, Mr. Armstrong? Maggie was arrested because of you! No! This is not true! Wedding ticket. I did not take it! Not take it for half a million, I mean! But you just told us you did! I took the one for ten dollars! Excuse you! I think you know the ordinary for gifting five memberships! That's so nice! And congratulations! You guys should try to join the Discord membership if you can! I mean, you should be able to. It should have all the instructions and stuff once you join. <laughs> but I hope you guys join and enjoy it. My non mafile. It was not. That's enough. Huh? Oh my god. Oh my god, is it him? Oh! Not who I was expecting! <laughs> I thought it was, uh, you know, Red Phoenix, right? Mr. Gadot! What the heck are you doing here? Ugh. This is without a doubt. The worst coffee I've ever had in my life, Mr. Armstrong. Oh yeah, I guess it makes sense that he would uh, be here. He came in here for coffee. Does his craving for coffee know no bounds? Perhaps Mr. Armstrong stole one of the victim's tickets on the day in question. Uh, I am a, I am a airhead, no? Just a pretty. <laughs> I love it. He is so me. He is so me when I do anything wrong. I am a head empty, no? I'm just a pretty little girl who everyone's laughing at. I'm just a little girly pop. You can't hold it against me. Um, but in that case, Maggie shouldn't be the one under suspicion. He had the wrong ticket. What? Mr. Armstrong made off with the winning ticket's pretty neighbor. Um, so the ticket he took was worthless. Not quite. He did win some- <laughs> Oh my god! He did win something. A dollar. You see, I'm pretty little face without my looks. I have nothing! So, what happened to the winning ticket then? The one he meant to steal. Indeed. What did happen to it? <laughs> I don't like spoiling myself by watching trailers, so... We'll just wait and see how the movie turns out tomorrow, <laughs> won't we? Are you flirting with me? <laughs> I always am. Ugh! Voila, you two! Time to laugh at la pretty little airhead! <laughs> he's so me. I <laughs> He's my spirit. He is- he is me. He is so me! Looks like I won't be needing this note anymore. Victor's note. Ah, oh, throw it into the trash. Really? Come on! It's good to still hold on to it though, just in case. I feel like we're gonna need a later. Looks like we've got a new mystery now. Namely, where did the winning lotto ticket go? I've got a bad feeling about this. Well, anyways. We can't let Maggie suffer any longer for this, and certainly not again. <clears throat> Do, 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 do. 
Okay. Might take a quick break and go to the bathroom. You guys can spend some quality time with Cherokoon since he's about to die. Um, and then I'll put Fuda here anyway since he's probably- even though he's probably gonna fall off again like- like he did last time. This is not a very stable, uh, nope, this is not- this is not gonna work out, huh, Fuda? This is not gonna happen, huh, little guy? Oh, there you go! Look at you! You look at the camera. Not that anybody cares about you, buddy. <laughs> All they care about is the chair. But yeah, I'll be right back. I'm gonna go to the bathroom and I might get like a drink or something too. And then we will jump into this case. Let me mute really quickly as well.
Welcome back. Did you guys enjoy your one-on-one uh, -on -one time with Cherokee and your last last hurrah with him before he <laughs> before he gets brutally murdered by me in a Monokuma onesie? I hope you guys enjoyed it. Because it's over now. <laughs> it's over forever. Okay. Excited about this trial. I feel like uh, it'll be interesting, if anything. Oh, I see. I guess I should have expected this. Nobody saw the other guy, huh? I think that I gave her like, not like a full-blown Kazuna voice, but I think I gave her like a little bit of a Kazuna, like nasally. But he was there when I took the coffee over, sir. Scout's honor! Maggie! Oh, Maggie! Ah, Detective Gumshoe! Are you doing all right? How are you feeling? Is he gonna confess to her by the end of this? I feel like he's not. As if you need to ask either question. Ooh, excuse me. Question, sir. Don't let him get you down, Maggie. And don't forget to eat well, okay? Roger! And you! Yes? You better square this case away. Got it, pal. Maggie's innocent, you hear? If you screw up, then I'll be doing some squaring away myself. Squaring away some paperwork for your arrest. I think he's serious. Hey, detective, you're on our side for once, right? I know, right? This is like the first time he's actually helped us <laughs> and been like nice. Hey, yep. So you'll be able to help Maggie out, right? Really, can you, sir? Um, of course. I got the situation under control. They are kind of perfect for each other, honestly. <laughs> Thank you, Leo's Productions. Godot is pan, probably. Like I said, I feel like I always kind of like, I don't know, headcan people is like bi or pan. That's just like my go-to. You know, it's, <laughs> I guess it's because I'm bi. I'm always like, oh, you know, like, <laughs> everybody's so awesome. Why wouldn't you? <laughs> Why wouldn't you be bi or pan? But thank you for uh, the donation. Appreciate you. Of course, I got the situation under control. I still don't know if I totally get the difference between Pan and Bi, to be honest. I'm gonna be the first witness on the stand today. If something I say doesn't mesh with the facts, make sure you point it out, alright? Sure. Okay, we're forming United Front today, pal. You get me? It's like Pan just like you date non-binary people, too? They're like, they're not, would I be Pan and not Bi? I always kind of wondered that, but I feel like I've heard some people say that, like... Bi is like that too. Like you can date non-binary people and still be bi. So I was like, I don't know. <laughs> so I feel like I always get a little confused on the the difference between the two. I can tell I can tell you how grateful I am, sir. I've always admired you so much, detective. I know I can count on you. Looks like it should all go pretty smoothly today, huh? I can only wish. Just whatever fits yourself. That's kind of what I thought. Like, uh, it's kind of like just kind of whatever you chose. Like, you know what I mean? I have Googled it. <laughs> Court is now in session for the trial of Maggie Bird. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Ah, bitter. Mr. Uh, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Ah, uh, what's wrong? Nothing. It's just whenever I addressed you in the previous trial, your response was, hey, "You was talking to me?" Oh, <laughs> that's so weird. Also, your skin was like bright red. <laughs> so weird. No, no, that wasn't me. That was the phony Phoenix. I think bi is every gender while pan was more about person. That's kind of thing I, what I thought when I Googled it, because I have Googled it before. I was like, I think that's why I lean towards calling myself bi, because I was like, I'm like attracted to like feminineness and masculinity, but I don't really necessarily care what gender the person I'm with is. You know what I mean? Or I was like, I figure pan maybe is more like you don't really necessarily are attracted to gender at all. Like maybe it's just you care about the personality. I don't know. I think it can be kind of uh, like a complicated discussion. No, that wasn't me. That was the phony Phoenix. I see. So our trusty Phoenix Stride is back with us now, is he? Our trusty. So, Mr. Goodell, your opening statement, please. Mr. Trite, whether you're a fake or the real deal, we will find out soon enough through this trial today. 
But I can already tell you, I'm the real Phoenix Wright. I was questioning whether you are Phoenix Wright. <laughs> I was question. I wasn't questioning whether you're Phoenix Wright. Did you see the fake Phoenix Wright al already? You just pretended. Like, I know you're not stupid, man. I know you saw that guy. I know you saw the Trump version of Phoenix Wright and you knew that was not really him. I wasn't questioning whether you are Phoenix or not. I was questioning whether you had studied law or not. That's what I intend to find out. There's no denying it. Behind that mask is a man who really hates me for some reason. <laughs> he was actually, it's actually because he's in love with Edgeworth. And he's like, but edgy. He won't up it up to me because he's still hung up on you, Phoenix Wright. Uh, thank you, David D. Did you hear about the mute chicken? It didn't, it, it didn't give a cluck. Uh, sorry about the foul language. <laughs> Got him. Thanks, David. Appreciate you, buddy. Hope you're doing well, by the way. On the mask of the man who really hates me for some reason or another. As everyone is aware, the court has already given its verdict on this case once. Therefore, I won't stand for a relevant testimony during its retrial. Nor will I stand for a simple repetition of the evidence presented in the last trial. I'm not planning on repeating anything that phony me said, trust me. Now then, Mr. Godot, please summon your first witness. Oh god, these characters are so stupid. <laughs> Thank you, Leo's Productions. Godot knows it's not Phoenix because he got a hate crush. Because <laughs> he's got a hate crush on Phoenix. Like, I can tell. I know. Oh my god. I mean, shady businessman, but yeah, we haven't reached a Trump yet. I was like, I saw somebody be like, don't disrespect Tiger like that. But he's got the orange skin. Well, I guess it's more red. But still, close enough. It'd be kind of fun to talk. I don't know if I can even do like a Trump impression. <laughs> this is the best, tr I'm the best liar, the best uh, version of Phoenix Wright. No version of Phoenix Wright is better than my version of Phoenix Wright. Let's start with the formality, shall we? Name and cooperation. Witness, state your name to the court. Uh oh, sorry, sir. The name's Police Department Detective. Occupation, Dick Gumshoe. Other way around, Detective. Huh? Oh, sorry. Anyways, I'm the officer in charge of this case since yesterday. Sir! Since yesterday! Yeah, the guy who was on the initial investigation's tied up with another case now. I hope Gumshoe's really got everything under control. I see, so Detective Gumshoe! Would you outline for the court the basic facts of the case? Um, yes, sir. The victim's name was Glen Elg. Glen Elg. Glen Elg. I'm like, what is that supposed to mean? Did we already decipher what, um, <laughs> what that was supposed to mean? He's a professional something. He was on the payroll of Blue Screen Inc., a local company. This is the victim's autopsy report. The court accepts this into evidence. Okay, diet of potassium cyanide poisoning. Time of death was between 1.30 and 2.30. Um, and here are the floor plans of the restaurant. Okay, neat. When the incident took place, the victim was sitting right here. Okay, so like right next to the front. The poison coffee was brought to him by the, um, uh, <laughs> the innocent person in this case! <laughs> by the waitress. The waitress being the accused. Oh, Glen Elg. Glen Elg is Glen Elg reverse? Oh, weird. <laughs> yeah, but what does it mean? The victim died from poisoning almost immediately after he took a sip of coffee. At the time of the incident, there were two other people in the restaurant. Mr. John Armstrong, the owner and chef. And a regular by the name of Victor Kudo. Um, it still seems to be a very straightforward case to me. Trevion floor plan out to the court record. Blueprints of the crime scene. X equals vi victim seat. I gotta join you. <laughs> Cheers, my dude. 
Thank you, Leo's Productions. We're going to play the Attorney Justice trilogy in the future? Probably, yeah. I do enjoy these games a lot. Um, I may end up, well, I think I'll probably play like maybe some shorter games after this because uh, I have been meaning to play um, Fran Bow, I think, for a really long time. I think there was another one that I feel like people have been recommending to me a lot. Oh, Little Misfortune, that one. And then The Walking Dead, I think people have really been wanting me to play that. So I think it might be fun to kind of change things up. Um, if and maybe do one of those games before I get into it. But yeah, I definitely plan on playing more Ace Attorney in the future. I really enjoy these games. I think they are <laughs> one of the few games that gives me that kind of like, I don't know, like feeling that Danganronpa gives me. Oh, Apollo Justice. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> I was just trying to make up a name. <laughs> I was just trying to make up whatever, whatever sounded like it would have been the name. <laughs> And the nail and nail the defendant's coffin shut with your own two hands. Now then, Detective Gumshoe, let's have your testimony. Um, yes, sir. What about investigations? I have no clue what order I'm gonna play it in. Cause I feel like I've heard mixed things on like, oh, you can play Apollo Justice first, or you can play Investigations first. I think technically you're supposed to play Investigations first, but I feel like people like Apollo Justice more from what I've heard, maybe. So I don't know, I'll probably talk to my mods about it. When the victim accident took place, the victim was alone at his table, sir. We understand the guy Glenn Elk was listening to the radio at the time. Traces of poison were found in his coffee cup. And what we found was potassium cyanide. That stuff really packs a punch. And, um, it looks like Miss Bird might have had, well, some kind of motive. Okay, well, what was the motive, King? Can you... can you tell me? Using the dark, aromatic depths of coffee to conceal the poison. And such a trash coffee at that. <laughs> Classy lady. My type. The facts of this case seem to be ironclad. I would ask you to begin your cross-examination, but... Yes? Please, no intimidation tricks this time. <laughs> I'm gonna keep hearing about what, uh, what the fake version did. No intimidation tricks this time around. Don't get your Glock out and point it at them. Don't turn it for the kill shot. Is that understood? I already told you that wasn't me. Oh god, they're all so stupid. <laughs> Thank you, Curse One, Lord of Cats. Thanks for being a member for eight months. Once again, I must reiterate, murder is okay in, in games. <laughs> in Minecraft. Thank you for being a member. Appreciate you. Well, the incident took place. The victim was alone at the table, sir. Hold it! Can I stop you for just a minute? Huh? What is it? Did I say something that contracts the contradicts the evidence? He's so desperate for that to be true, he's practically crying. Your testimony just now doesn't match the testimony given by Miss Beard. She claims that there was another man at the victim's table with very similar hair to mine. Yeah, that's what she said, and I... What killer wouldn't say that when faced with a homicide conviction? Hey! Sadly, her testimony isn't supported by the owner or the other customer. Isn't that right, Detective Gumshoe? Yeah, it's true. There are two testimonies tie up on that. They both said there was no other guy at the table. Hmm. Um, what should I do? Should I press on this? Point a little harder. Let's press! Always press! Well, maybe the other witness just missed him. Perhaps their view of the victim's table was obscured in some way. So I feel like, um, what's his face? John would definitely have a reason for lying, since I kind of feel like he's in cahoots with Tiger. But I guess if Kudo saw it too, then. Saw it that way too, then. I guess that does kind of make it a little more confusing, because I don't really know why he would lie. And thank you, Kenneth Anderson. Did you just make a gun joke? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> thank you for the donation. Appreciate you. I feel like Tiger's the type to just get a gun out and be like, say what I want you to say. Ha, huh, that argument is as weak as the coffee at Trey Beyond, right? I have here in my possession a ticket. A ticket? It looks more like a photo to me. Yeah, a one-way ticket to Guiltyville. Population, the defendant. There's a photo taken from the from near the entrance uh, to the kitchen. Okay. This is the scene as witnessed by the chef moments after the poisoning took place, correct? Tiger is just literally standing, like, over here. 
<laughs> he's literally just standing right over there where the little like, you know, thing can uh, protect him, right? I think the, I think the corp will agree that with such a clear view of the scene of the crime. How, Mr. Trite, could anyone have overlooked a second person at the table? Oh! It certainly seems to show the victim's table extremely clearly. I think you all not see the parchment or whatever in between? He can totally hide there. Um, the crime photo. The photo of the scene taken from near the kitchen. We understand the guy. Glenn Alk was listening to the radio at the time. Hold it! Was he using some lame-ass <laughs> computer strap thing? He was listening to his radio, you say. Yeah, he had a portable radio in his chest pocket. Maggie told us too. Told us that too, didn't he? Didn't she? Something about how one of them had some sort of earpiece. What should I do? Should I press on this harder? Always, <laughs> always press harder. Thank you, Dan Gaming fan. By means attracted to the gender the same as your own, and one or more of other genders. Pan means attracted to or has potential to be attracted to people of all genders, binary or not. So. I don't know, that just sounds like the same thing. <laughs> but I guess, I don't know, I'm still kind of confused. One more pan attracted or has potential to people of all genders, binary or not. I guess so only genders is bi, and then pan is like non-binary? Because I feel like they're both all, I don't know. I don't know if I want to continue this discourse. <laughs> I feel like people are getting kind of heated in chat about it. Uh, maybe I'll look into it more. I, I'm one or the other. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like probably bi from what I've read, but one or the other. <laughs> Thank you for the donation, though. Appreciate ya. Huh? How should I know? Thanks a lot. We're now one step closer to the middle of nowhere. This isn't going very well, is it? Um, detective, could you perhaps tell us about the poison and how it was used? Trace of poison were found in his coffee cup. So a trace of the poison were found in the coffee cup and nowhere else. Not sure I get you, pal. Was the poison a liquid or was it a powder? If I had to put it in a layman's term, I say it was a powdery substance. Okay. So the poison could have been in anything that was on the table. Sugar, salt, pepper. That's a pretty good point, I think. Ha! Do you put salt and pepper in your coffee, Trite? The victim took his coffee black with no sugar. Okay. Ugh! <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> he could add it. The salt could have been poison when he added the salt to the salt to the poison or to the coffee or well, I can't speak. It seems that the poison could have only been in the coffee. Okay, he was saying it could have been the salt and it could have been in something he like ate too. What should I do? Always press harder. Always blue badger. Are you absolutely certain the victim even drank any of his coffee? Ah, uh, what do you mean? According to this file, the poison was found in the victim's coffee cup. But what proof is there that the victim ever drank any of it? Oh, hey, you're right! That's what I- th oh god. Yeah, I had a feeling. In case you were wondering, the last objection was for the detective there. Huh? For me? Oh, hey, you're right. You may be fooling the court, but I'm not falling for it. If you have the time to waste, you have the time to present that piece of evidence. Um, that piece of evidence, sir? Yeah, that piece of evidence. That proves he didn't drink the coffee? Um, uh, what piece was it again? He just like me for real head empty. This! Oh no, what the fuck? Why are you doing it to Phoenix? You were questioning, you were questioning what's his face? Uh, Gumshoe. Should I be grateful this coffee's only hot enough to give me first degree burns? Oh, now I remember. Um, this is the, uh, the victim's coffee cup. Oh, you can see like a stain from where he like sipped it. <laughs> Yeah, the victim's cup. Take a look at the rim. Oh yes, it's unmistakable. There's clearly a coffee stain on it. Conclusive proof that the victim did drink the poison coffee that was in the cup. 
The victim gulped down the bitter death that the waitress brought to him. Like this! <laughs> Jesus! I'm having a caffeine overdose. For the record, the only prints on the cup were the detective, the victims, and the defendants. Okay, the only prints were the victims and defendants. The coffee contained potassium cyanide covered in the victim and Maggie's fingerprints. Okay, we get that. For record, that's good. Upon further investigation of this cup, we found a certain chemical substance. And what we found was potassium cyanide. That stuff really packs a punch. Thanks, Dan Gaming Fan, for the donation. I just looked it up. That's what one source said. I'm not entirely sure either. I heard somewhere that bi sees gender while pan doesn't. That was what I thought the difference was. Where it was like, bi is like you're attracted to all genders, but like, I don't know, you're like attracted to gender. It's, or I guess like maybe gender presenting like qualities. Because I feel like I like masculine qualities and feminine qualities and all that. And so it's just kind of like, I think that makes the most, I think that definition makes the most sense. Where pan doesn't necessarily see gender while bi like is attracted to all genders but like the gender presentation affects it if that makes sense i don't know i'm trying to like explain it the best way i can but yeah we can go ahead and drop it just because i feel like uh, it is getting a little heated i feel like it is kind of a little bit of a confusing <laughs> topic too for whatever reason but um let me um i think i accidentally scrolled through some of this on accident too but uh thank you for the donation yeah and i was just kind of telling people to maybe stop talking about it because i didn't want anybody to like fight or anything you know and what we found was potassium cyanide. That stuff really packs a punch! <gasps> potassium cyanide. I've heard of that chemical before. Exactly how strong is this poison, Detective Gumshoe? It's well, that stuff's lethal! Ate too much in your history! How much is too much? A lethal dose is 0 0.2 grams. And that's about enough to finish anyone off. 0.2 grams? How much is that? You know when you swab your ears for earwax? Yeah, about that much. Earwax, huh? Sounds like something Gumshoe's got in abundance. <laughs> Lord. Um, such a small quantity of poison could have been concealed anyways. And, um, it looks like Miss Bird. I feel like it was probably this one. Cause she, like, kind of... What was her motive? Allegedly? I can't even remember. I feel like, you know, what's his face? Um, Jean, I'm sorry. How can I say that to you, Jean? You're not what's his face. You are king of my heart. But, uh, <laughs> it seems like he has way more of a motive. Some kind of a motive. Yeah, but if you ask me, it's been blown way out of proportion. Huh. <laughs> you know what my golden rule is, detective? Chuck out a bad cup of coffee, you can always get another. Uh, I don't get it. I can always make up more shit. <laughs> I'm saying we can always get another witness on the stand. If we can witness on the stand, if we have to chuck you out. Gulp. So stick to the facts, detective. Now then, what was Miss Beard's motive? Come on, gumshoe. She was... They said she wanted to steal a lottery ticket. Okay, it was just a lottery ticket. But she doesn't have a reason... Well, I guess everybody wants money. <laughs> I guess that's always gonna be a reason enough. I knew it. That's what we heard yesterday, too. I disappeared from the scene of the crime. And it wasn't just any lottery ticket. It was a winning ticket for half a million. Yes, oh my goodness. And Mr. Armstrong knew about the ticket, too, didn't he? But he stole the wrong one. Then, is it possible Maggie stole the winning one? What should I do? P always press. You don't have to ask me, Phoenix. I'm literally always gonna do it. Wait a minute! The mere fact the lottery ticket disappeared in no way implicates my client. Ha! I have here in my hand the very ticket- Oh. <laughs> Where'd you get that from? You didn't get that from Maggie though, right? The very ticket in question. That's the half a million dollar lottery ticket! One of the female police officers found it when she was conducting a search. I'm the defendant. That was planted evidence, Your Honor! Order, order! Ah, she's quite a lucky bird. <laughs> Get it? Our little waitress. You will submit that ticket as evidence to the court immediately! I better keep an eye on that ticket, the way the judge's voice is quivering. 
Victim's lottery ticket add to the core record. Winning ticket for half a million dollars. Found during a body search of Mac. <laughs> it was on her body too? This ticket was presented to the court in the previous trial too. But it feels heavier now somehow. Half a million dollars, you say? Oh no, I dropped it into my pocket. <laughs> and nobody will ever see it ever again. It's just a scrap of paper. What matters is where it was found, your honor. And that's on Maggie's person, unfortunately. <laughs> that's enough! The facts of this case seem overwhelmingly clear to me. The defendant had ample opportunity to commit the crime of which she was charged. Furthermore, it seems beyond reasonable doubt that she did indeed commit this crime. I like an old... <laughs> Are you flirting with me now? <laughs> Is it because Mr. Delight's not here to flirt with? Are you getting desperate, Gado? I like a man who knows the score. Oh, you don't say! There was also the matter of the half a million dollar lottery ticket. I mean, who should this go to? I call dibs! That alone provides a very credible motive. I mean, for that sum of money, even I might be tempted to bend the rules! <laughs> I don't mind an old man who is weak. <laughs> Why are you hitting on him? I don't mind an old man who's weak to the siren call of money. I'm not good, Nick. The evidence against Maggie is starting to pile up and Godot's flirting with the judge. It's over for us. Yeah, that's because the court has ruled guilty once already. I'd say it's absolute. Uh, it's about time to wrap up this repeat performance. With one final decisive piece of evidence. He's got more evidence against Maggie! Oh! Oh, her apron. Oh, Jesus, is that blood, girly pop? <laughs> I feel like Fake Phoenix didn't even have to do that much! This is the apron on the delightful Mrs. Bird. The apron the delightful Mrs. Bird was wearing at the time. Oh, wow, that's not the cleanest apron I've ever seen. That stain looks like it can't be blood. Can it? Ha! Seems the star of our little play was a little flustered. And somehow spilled coffee on herself. The coffee. That's it, not exactly the first thing that caught my eye. Of course, the coffee stain isn't the most interesting thing about this apron. No, there's something else that stands out even more. Something else? I presume you mean... Of course, I'm referring to the pocket. Oh, the pocket? Was that where the ticket was found? A search carried out right after the incident uncovered this! <laughs> like, did he even have to do anything? Like, <laughs> Fig Phoenix could have just walked in and said nothing. <laughs> said absolutely nothing and she would have gotten and she would have gotten the guilty verdict. He really didn't have to do all the threatening and shit. Potassium cyanide, the very poison used by the killer, was in her pocket. A bottle of poison in Maggie's pocket. Yeah, and Maggie's prints were the only one. <laughs> Jesus Christ. What? <laughs> You should have known all this stuff before taking this case, Phoenix. <laughs> I'll be like, deuces, girl. It kind of seems like you did this, girly pop. Order, order. The court will accept these items into evidence. Apron add to the court record. Worn by Maggie at the time of the incident. Has a small pocket. <sighs> Excuse me, but big stains. Need more coffee, huh, Gado? Dudley powdery, powdery poison. Bears Maggie's fingerprints. Found in her apron pocket. Maybe it'll be like a different, like, a different poison was used, and that's how we'll get her, that's how we'll get her off. There's something still bothering me, Mr. Godot. Well, have you not explained the blood stain to the court? Blood stain? Oh, what blood stain would that be? Don't play games, prosecutor, the blood colored stain that's smeared all over the apron! That's ridiculous. No one told me anything about- <laughs> Bro, it's right there! You don't need to be told. Just look at it. Well, detective, could the stain really be blood? No way, sir. That's- uh, It's ketchup. Oh, ketchup. Ketchup, sir. Uh, ketchup? 
She must have gotten some on her apron while taking some of their breakfast that- some on their breakfast that day. I guess she is super clumsy. You could have spoken up a little sooner, Detective Gumshoe! Pull a stun like that again and I'll have you drink 17 cups of ketchup, witness! Oh god! I thought everyone knew what it was already! I haven't seen anything yet to make me doubt the last ruling I made on this case! Okay, Phoenix, it's our turn. The motive, the opportunity, the supporting evidence, they have all been clearly established. <laughs> Case closed. Well, trite. Seems you really are a phony after all. Oh, uh, you really know how to drive a man nuts. Witness, please continue with your testimony. Describe for the court the crime scene and the findings of your investigation there. The investigation. The crime was- Stop making fun of how I say it, okay? I'm so sick of bullying. I will ban you. <laughs> I won't. <laughs> but still, don't bully me. It's not nice. I say it like cash up, you know? It's not- It's- It's my- It's my business. Keep- Keep to yourself. The crime was reported at 2.25 p.m. by a kind of scary old man, sir. Okay, 2.25. The creepy guy. Poor Maggie had been passed out from the shock. It must have been really tough for her. The victim didn't have any identification on him. But we figured out who he was pretty quick and then the investigation went smoothly. When Maggie was searched, we found the lottery ticket and the bottle of poison. And that was it. There was nothing else missing from the crime scene. Um, you identified the victim and secured your prime suspect. Very good. Last chance to convince the court you're a real lawyer, trite. Don't count any more cross-examinations cross after this one. Uh, come on, this can't be the last one, man. We just started. So let the fun begin. The investigation. The crime was reported at 255 by some scary old <laughs> Did he have a big nose and throw a pigeon feet at people? Scary old man, Detective Gumshoe. There's an old man who's a regular at the restaurant where the incident happened. Oh, we're obviously talking about the same old man. Officers were dispatched right after the crime. The report came in, but the old guy still made a fuss. What took you so long? Then he hurled abuse at them <laughs> and seeds, yep. Um, seeds. <laughs> Yummy. Now I'm hungry. Ha, it was nothing I caught. Each one- <laughs> What the f- Are you a pigeon, dude? <laughs> Try to throw more at me, old man. I can take it. I caught each one of them with my teeth. I guess not even the mighty Godot can avoid being attacked by that guy. The old man was the only other customer in the place at the time. He took his time finding a payphone, apparently, so he was late reporting the crime. Poor Maggie had passed out from the shock. It must have been really odd for her. I don't know if this is really gonna help, but I'll press it anyways. How long was the defendant unconscious for? My officers got to the crime scene around 2.40. Maggie was still out cold in the kitchen at the time. It took another 10 minutes or so before she came to. I would have liked to have been on the scene myself. I bet you would have liked to have carried out the search, too. <laughs> so you could hide evidence. <laughs> I would have loved to see Maggie asleep like that, all pretty and peaceful. <laughs> not showing your, uh, bias at all. You're a professional Detective Gumshoe, not a professional bird watcher. Save the romantics for your own time, Detective. All we need now, all we need to know about is the investigation. Oops, I guess I'm pretty red right now, aren't I? The victim didn't have any identification on him. Hold it! He had the MC Hammer Doodle! He didn't have any. Are you saying it was stolen then? No, I don't think so. He's just a sketchy, a sketchy dude! The victim didn't have any driver's license or even a credit card on him, pal. <laughs> Damn, sent all of his money on lotto tickets? All he had was 58 cents in his wallet. 58 cents. Yeah, I can't believe I found someone with less in their wallet than me, pal! I have 59 cents! The victim sounds like he was a thoroughly miserable young man. 
I think that bird did a favor! <laughs> Killing him! Or some kind of outlaw, why not give a bit of an edge? I think I'm onto something here. Okay. Victim didn't have any identification on him. Crime scene. Pony. Da -da -da. What was this thing? MC Bomber. Oh, it says 500k over here, too. I didn't even realize that until just now. Uh, and then Mask to Mask. <laughs> I was like, that doesn't really identify him, though, I don't think so. Oh, just keep pressing. I figured out who he was pretty quick, and then the investigation went smoothly. Wait a second. Huh? Did I say something dumb again? Let me paraphrase what you just testified to this court. The victim didn't have any form of ID on him. That's basically what you said, yes? Yeah, basically. In that case, how were you able to identify the victim so quickly? Oh. That. He's so lit down, he's got the whole sagging shoulders and puppy eyes thing going. There was a prescription bag on the victim's table, along with a lottery ticket. Oh, okay. Well, that's like a form of, well, I guess it's not like a technical, like a legal form of identification, but, you know, still identifies him for this case. Seems Mr. Glenel visited his doctor before he went to Trebion. We got the victim's name from the medical records of the doc who prescribed the meds. Is it potassium cyanide in there? Um, it's a reliable enough source for the court. What should I do? Okay, always, always hear more. Ask about his health insurance. Oh. What would that have to do with anything? Prescription bag? Let's ask the health insurance. I'm kind of curious. The victim had no form of identification on him, correct? Yeah. And yet, before arriving at the restaurant, he went to see a doctor. Yeah, for real. I was like, wouldn't you at least need, like, some identification on you? I always have to show, like, my driver's license or something. Which means he must have had his medical insurance card with him. Oh, that is very true! The fact that it hasn't been found points to only one obvious conclusion. The victim's medical card was stolen! By Jean, probably. Ha! <laughs> I wonder how much I could sell this for on eBay! True, the victim didn't have a medical insurance card. But why? Because Mr. Glenelg didn't have medical insurance to begin with. Uh, what? Oh, miss I thought a thoroughly miserable young man. Or some kind of outlaw. A bit of an edge never hurt anyone. Looks like we're off course again, Nick. Damn it. I guess maybe the bag itself. Let me press that. Explain for the court, you have ins. Okay, figured out who he was. Let me see if I can press this again. I don't care if there'd be anything super important on the pills, but I guess there might be. Okay, I was like, I don't know, man. Not paying for health insurance sounds awesome to me. I guess the only bad thing is then you don't have health insurance. <laughs> I guess that part kind of sucks. Ask about the prescription bag. What sort of medicine was in the bag? Well, actually, the bag. Oh. Huh. So did he overdose on his own med. like medication? I don't know. Maybe? I feel like that could be important, because, like, we all say he died from the cyanide potassium poison. Did it say that on the eye autopsy, though? Like, the specific? Okay, yeah, it did say. <laughs> Never mind. It did say specifically it was from that, but maybe there's potassium cyanide in his little, uh, drugs that he bought, too. I mean, it was from a doctor, though, right? I mean, that just, potassium cyanide just sounds like <laughs> cyanide, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, I don't think a doctor would be prescribing that. The bag we found was empty. Oh, yeah, completely empty. It was completely empty. Victim's prescription bag, add, bag out to the court record. The victim got this from the doctor before going to portray beyond. The bag is empty. Ha! You're entering an empty paper bag as evidence? Desperate are you, trite. Ah. Oh. Now what happened with the investigation after that, detective? When Maggie was searched, we found the lottery ticket and a bottle of poison. <laughs> but the defendant had been passed out for a while, correct. Oh, okay, so that's when they planted it on her. That makes sense. Please, let it be the old man. <laughs> so he can go to prison! 
That'd be nice. Isn't it possible somebody planted the evidence on Maggie's pocket? Hey, yeah, you nailed it, pal! Um, it happened to me all the time. We had an apartment party the other day, and when I got home, I was wearing the boss's shoes! <laughs> no, you're just an idiot. Keep up with this crazy testimony, detective, and those shoes will end up down your throat. Sorry. So trite. Someone planted the evidence in Maggie's pocket. That's a pretty bold statement. Care to back it up with the evidence? Um, well, I'd love to if I had any. It appears you have no evidence to support your theory, Mr. Wright. Continue with your testimony, witness. And that was it. There was nothing else missing from the crime scene. I think there was, though, wasn't there? Wasn't the magazine, like, uh, was moved, I guess, technically to the, like, wall or whatever, but technically, it was moved from the crime scene, right? Right? So the half a million dollar lottery ticket and the bottle of poison were accounted for. Yeah, interesting. It's true that those two items are accounted for. But wasn't there another lottery ticket that was stolen that day? Oh, yeah. The one the restaurant owner took. He won a whole dollar with it. <laughs> what a lucky guy, huh? And they're just going to let him get away with it. I think he would technically lose money from that. <laughs> like, wouldn't the lottery ticket cost more than a dollar? It was just one dollar, detective. I guess no one cares when it's that little, except for Gumshoe. If I don't find a hole in this testimony, the judge is going to hand down his verdict. Gumshoe isn't giving us anything to work with. And we can't find any contradictions if he doesn't give us something. That's true. But Maggie and Gumshoe are like dumb and dumber. Our only hope is that they are so dumb, they miss something obvious. Come on, Gumshoe, be the dumbest you've ever been! <laughs> that is so true! Crime reported at 2.55. Scary old man. Maggie passed out from the shock. Must have been real tough. Victim didn't have any identification on him, but we figured out he was pretty quick. Maggie was searched. We found the bottle. We found a lottery ticket and the bottle of poison, and that was it. There was nothing else missing from the crime scene. I'm gonna try the newspaper or whatever. I think it makes sense, but I don't know if this is like what it wants right now. You know what I mean? Oh god dang it. A JK! <laughs> I know when I've gotten something wrong. Nothing else missing from the crime scene. I feel like it is this, just because it sounds like a line that you would, I don't know, like whatchamacallit, um, screw up. It sounds like one of the, you know, it just sounds like where it's like, there was nothing else missing from the crime scene. Not one thing. And it's like, was there? I think there was. Um, but what was it? <laughs> I don't know! Okay, um... Uh, um... Coffee cup's there... What about the person, huh? He was missing from the crime scene. The victim of Maggie's fingerprints. Half a million dollars. I mean, technically the lottery ticket was also missing, but I think he kinda talks about that when we question him about it. Maybe this isn't it. Maybe I'm off. Let me just press it again. I'm kind of curious. <laughs> Let me just see. Am I Delulu thinking this is it? Yeah, those are already accounted for, so I don't think uh, that's what I'm going for. Okay. Crime was reported. Kind of scary old man. Must have been real tough for her. The victim... There's also this victim didn't have any identification. Figured out who he was, and then the investigation went smoothly. When we've searched, when Maggie searched, we found a lottery ticket and a bottle of poison. That was it. There was nothing else missing from the crime scene. Is it that he technically had the prescription on him? And that's why... I don't fucking know. <laughs> I probably am overthinking, but I I don't know. Let me just look at the evidence. Article for December 5th. Say trial's client, guilty, left victim, doodle in the victim's handwriting. Picked up from a bench in Vitamin Square? No. 
Lunch special, no. Half a million dollars. Owner of the loan is Tinder Lender. The ketchup? <laughs> Overcooking. <laughs> That's my specialty. See, take it. Covered the victim of Maggie's fingerprints. They wanted Gumption to be stupid, but now it's just me being stupid. Found during the body search of Maggie. Born by Maggie, the incident has small pocket but big stains. I don't know what to do! I guess I was just born stupid, but... It wouldn't be this, would it? Whatever, I'm just gonna try it anyways. Maybe it's because I'm sleepy. I do feel very sleepy right now. I didn't put enough caffeine in this coffee. <laughs> okay, I feel like, what was the one that they were like, um... Navigation on it. Let me trust this one again. Hold it! Didn't have any, you saying it was stolen then? I don't think so. Victim, didn't have a driver's license on it, 50 cents. Man, I got an edge. I don't know, man. The investigation went smoothly. Did I say something dumb again? Let me paraphrase. You just testified. Victim didn't have any form of ID. It's basically what you said. Yes. Basically. In that case, how were you able to identify the victim so quickly? Oh, that. He's got the whole sagging shoulders, puppy eyes thing. Prescription bound on the victim's table. Um, prescription bound on the victim's table along with a lottery ticket. Bag with lottery ticket. Seems like Glenn Elg visited the doctor before he went to Trabion. Got the victim's name from the medical records of the doc who prescribed the meds. It's a reliable enough source for the court. That was it. There was nothing else missing. A lottery ticket, is how somebody say? I think the nearby districts. <laughs> I don't know, yeah. If any of y'all want to uh, just give me a hint, that'd be cool. Forgot the contradiction in this testimony. Lottery ticket, maybe? Winning lottery ticket for half a million dollars. Found during a body search of Maggie. Saying he's just as ever again after this happens. This over the shock it must be real tough for her. Maggie searched for a lottery ticket and a bottle of poison. That was it. There was nothing else missing from the crime scene. Something else was also there, but it was hidden somewhere. I guess I was just born stupid because I have no clue. <laughs> I feel like it is this last one. Don't find a hole in this testimony. The judge is going to hand out a verdict. It's not working with us. Crap, I didn't mean to press that. Oh crap, I skipped through it again. I didn't mean to! Nothing else the crime scene. Y'all can just tell me, because I literally have no clue. <laughs> I literally have no idea. <laughs> oh! Wait, 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 wait. Oh, am I stupid? Am I stupid? Is it the prescription with the last one? Is that it? Maggie, uh, let me do this and not press enter, so. Pretty quick. Okay. Ticket. Okay, 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 okay. Is this it? I think this might be it. Oh, thank God. <laughs> thank God. Detective Gumshoe, I think I should point something out to you. There is just one small contradiction. I was definitely overthinking it. In your testimony, because they just brought that up. 
<laughs> and I totally missed it. Oh, finally! I'm getting all anxious, just waiting, so hurry up, will ya? You testified that nothing else was missing from the crime scene. However, the pre prescription bag you mentioned was empty. Do the officers recover the medicine from the scene of the crime later? Um, no, they didn't. The victim was given a prescription right before going to Trebion. Well then, did the medicine di Well then, did the medicine- Where then did the medicine disappear to? Ew. Our two cool, pal! <laughs> you figured it out! Indeed! Due to consideration, it wasn't given to the victim's prescription in the previous trial. Witness, why do you always overlook such vital piece of evidence? I, um... I guess that's the most careless thing I've done so far, huh? The victim was killed by poison. The victim's medicine mysteriously disappeared. The victim's own prescription could have been the lethal poison itself. Why would a doctor prescribe cyanide? I don't feel like that's a thing. Well, Mr. Godot, what do you have to say to that? Ugh, that's all. What? Read for the court name of the clinic on the prescription bag, if you will. Uh, what's the clinic's name got to do with anything? New Ear Otolarin Loto <laughs> blah blah blah. Otolarin That's like laryngitis. Let's do like your throat, I think. Just what kind of illness was the victim suffering from, Mr. Godot? Hardly an illness, your honor. More like a bitter war wound, you could say. A war wound? Wound? The day before the ins the day before the incident, Mr. Elg found himself in a fight with Goku. That's why he had the scouter on. He took a blow to the side of the head and ruptured his eardrum. Okay. He ruptured his eardrum. Okay, could he not hear all the way then? At least like in one ear, right? Then what on earth was the prescription he was given? It was a cream that was to be applied topically inside his ear canal. Not to be ingested. Okay. What? Well, that kind of screws us over. It's mentioned in the autopsy report if you read the fine print. It found traces of the medication in the victim's left ear. Yes, here it is, in very, very fine print. It seems Mr. L correctly applied some of this medication while he was at Trebion. Therefore, it would have been absurd to believe that he would have eaten his, eaten his medication. Oh, God. It seems that this medication is relevant to the case after all. No, my meds, Nick. If you don't think of something quick, it'll all be over. She's right, but I can't get away with any old weak objection. <laughs> what should I do? Um, bullshit your way through it? Why are you asking me, bro? <laughs> Didn't you see how much I struggled before? Push the medication issue. I mean, if it's topical, it could be poisonous to ingest. So then somebody kind of mix that in with the coffee. Maybe. Only moments ago, Mr. G Godos made the following statement. It seems Mr. L correctly applied some of his medication while he was at Trey Beyond. If that's the case, then why was the medicine medication not found at the scene of the crime? Ugh. But the medication in question was for topical use inside the ear canal. It doesn't mean you still can't eat it. I mean, you shouldn't, but <laughs> maybe somebody did it. That doesn't change the fact that it could not be found at the crime scene. However insignificant it may seem, it's a lawyer's duty to pursue the truth. Objection. Objection. You know as well as I do that the medication is irrelevant. It hardly seems likely that the prescription drug would contain potassium cyanide. Can I look at the, you know, receipt or whatever? The bag came in? I feel like it usually says what's in it. It hardly seems likely that the coffee the waitress served would contain it either. But it did! The possibility is undeniable! Ah! Uh, smoke! That's enough! Mr. Godot is the detective, the only witness the prosecution wishes to call. Please, call my best boy. I want to see him! I want to see my boy! I want to see Jean. Mr. Godot, get comes you out of here. Ah, oh, my, uh... I've got my own witness I like to call, sir. 
Get out. No, not him! No, I want Jean, not Kato or whatever his name is. Kudo. It's the old man who was there in the restaurant the day of the murder. Ugh. Victor Kudo. Can we skip him? Can we skip him? I want my king. The pigeon hater. Very well, the matter of the disappearing medication seems a little more trivial at best. However, it wasn't explored at all in the previous trial, and that is something that bothers me. Yay, good job, Nick! The court will adjourn for a ten minute recess, after which we will hear the prosecution's next witness. Ha! I suppose this means I'll just have to finish you off in my last six cups. Court is adjourned for recess! Ah, oh, this is so sad. <laughs> Maybe next time. Oh, thank you, sleepy boy. Whoop whoop. Uh, finally I can watch a stream again. I'm so glad to see you back. Thanks for being a member for 19 months. Dang. Phew, that was close. Tell, tell me about Why am I the judge all of a sudden? Tell me about it. I nearly died in there. That's my line, sir. No, it's my line. I really did think I did die a little bit. Looks like we all nearly died in there. I can't believe Detective Gumshoe. How can he betray us like that? Huh? He said he'd help me, but he totally set me up. I don't think he meant to do that, Maggie. He was just backed into a corner and he was born stupid. So there's just kind of how he is. I mean, the guy's got to do his job, right? It's okay. I know all about lies and betrayal. I've had them my whole life. But it really hurt this time. It felt like someone punched me hard in the stomach. I hate that guy. Oh, God. <laughs> no, Gumshoe just waiting in the wings, like sobbing <laughs> with a bouquet in his hands. I never want to see him again. Poor Gumshoe. So the next witness is going to be that old guy from the park, right? Yeah, Mr. Kudo, lover of waitress outfits and projectile seeds. I bet he's gonna be really stubborn. I mean, he's pretty set in his ways, you know? Yeah, he's a big old grouch. Are you going to be able to handle him, Nick? Yeah, I can take whatever he throws at me. Oh, literally. <laughs> I wanna see Gudo catching the bird seeds with his teeth like he mentioned before. I need, I need a gif of that. Even those never-ending bird seeds. Poor I know, poor gumshoe, man. She'll come around. She was all she also has like three brain cells, so <laughs> she'll forget about it in a day and they'll be just fine, I believe. Court will now re reconvene for the trial of Maggie Beer, Bird, whatever. Mr. Goodell, your next witness, please. The prosecution calls the lucky old timer who caught the show over a cup of coffee. Will the witness please take to the stand? Let's just get this done so we can get back to the best boy. Name and occupation, if you don't mind. My name's Victor Kudo, born and bred in the land of the rising sun. <laughs> Why do I have a southern accent then, Weeby? If I'm from Japan, yeah! <laughs> oh man, McGucket! Lord, honor and duty are what make me mind you. I can be quite emotional at times, too. We don't need to hear about that, Mr. Kudo. Just tell the court your occupation. <laughs> My occupation? Staring at women! <laughs> yeah! Listen, youngin, how could you call out call how much call did you think there is for Komodo embroidery here? Komodo embroidery? That's what I do or did back in Japan. <laughs> back in Japan, which we are no longer in. Before I moved to Japan California, I embroidered family crest on kimonos. <laughs> My ex ancestors were embroidering kimonos before this country even existed. Wow, real crap craftsmen, they're a dying breed. Hey, maybe you can embroider my costume sometime. Anyways, like I said, there's not much demand for that kind of thing here. So I had to take a job working in the cash register at a burger joint. Definitely not a ramen place. Pretending to smile. That burger joint would have been better off putting him in the kitchen. Now then, witness, were you in the restaurant at the time of the incident? Oh yes, I was eating some seeds over a cup. Does he eat the pigeon seeds too? <laughs> I guess you can eat the seeds. It just kind of feels weird. Because I mean, like, I guess you can buy seeds at like Kroger to eat for yourself. But like, I would have never thought just like the bird seeds I bought to just start <laughs> munching on them. You know what I mean? I was eating some seeds over Javachino. Seeds. <laughs> 
What do you think these are, huh? I see. So you saw everything that happened, Gramps. Did I? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, I did. I saw it all. Then please tell the court. We're all ears. Sure, sure. I'll tell you. I'll tell you every last detail. He's really getting into this. Oh, he's so weird. What I witness, y'all. The young man was reading the sports paper. The serving girl brought him a javachino, but she put something in it. Uh, man took one sip of it. Looked like he was in terrible pain, and then he collapsed. She puts a, he actually saw her put something in it. That's the serving girl right there in the defendant's chair. I remember her well. I can never forget her. <laughs> Mr. Kudo, she's not a serving girl. <laughs> Please refer to her as a waitress. Kai, you're as bad as the rest of them. All these newfangled words. What's wrong with old-fashioned ones? <laughs> God. Newfangled. All this talk of radios and glasses. It's wireless and spectacles, I tell you. Excuse me? Listen to me, everyone. Don't forget the old... <laughs> Don't forget the old values. God, I was expecting him to put on like a fucking MAGA hat at this point. Don't let the good old day slip away. Okay, somebody please get him out of here. <laughs> okay, old man, it's time for your medicine. I think it's time to begin the cross-examination, Mr. Wright. Yes, your honor. What I was... <laughs> Why couldn't it be Sean? <laughs> That's all I wanted. The young man was reading a sports paper. Hold it. So you saw the victim then, you saw Mr. Glen Elg. I wanted to know if Guts and Braun retained his championship or not. So he was looking at the sports paper the victim was reading, huh? And at the location in question. Yeah, it'd be pretty hard to read. There are partitions between the tables and on the same side of the restaurant, right? Let's make Japan California old again! <laughs> the new slogan! <laughs> <laughs> Kudo 2025. <laughs> oh, that cracked me up, Crookamancer. <laughs> so what if there are? If you say so, if if you say that you could see the victim, that means you were sitting at the table on the other side of the restaurant, correct? Come! I go to that place to drink Javachinos. I don't go to sit. <laughs> I don't remember which table I was sitting at. You mean you go there to eye the waitress? The serving girl brought a javachino, but she put something in it! Yeah! Hold it! Mr. Kudo, that is a very grave accusation. Are you sure about what you saw? Victor Kudo never makes mistakes. I dot every T and cross every I. I... Right, wait. <laughs> what did he say? It backwards? I see. My eyesight's fine. The doctor said I only need spectacles for reading and driving. I bet his eyes are only really fine when he's scooping out the waitress. <laughs> I love how judgmental Phoenix is being of him. You go, King. And I saw what the serving girl put into the javachino as well. I better know what's coming up and something tells me I'm not gonna like it. <laughs> Whatever, let's just press it. Thank you, Dan Gaming Fan. If he's from Okinawa, that would be the south of Japan. That's why a lot of heart is southern in the American release. Ah, oh, okay, interesting. I guess that makes sense. I've always really wanted to go to Okinawa. It looks so pretty there. Press harder. Thanks again for the dono. Appreciate ya. Your Honor. We need more clarification on what was put into the victim's coffee. I'd like to ask what the witness, that the witness add what he knows about this to his testimony. Am um, I agree. Witness, will you please enlighten us, please? Sure, sure. It was poison! There's no question about it. She very conspicuously put some white powder in there, yeah. Ugh, oh, did she really put that into the coffee? It's probably just some powdered sugar, you know, or some cocaine. <laughs> We don't judge her, queen. You doubt me, boy! She t just a little extra kick for the coffee. <laughs> no big deal. She took out a small brown bottle and sprinkled it in. The bottle wasn't brown. Oh, it was. <laughs> I thought it was green. Never mind. <laughs> My bad. She took out some small brown bottle and sprinkled it in. Couldn't she have been adding sugar? Sugar in a small brown bottle like that? Like that, witness, could you please describe the bottle in more concrete terms? Ha! A 
bottle like this, perhaps? Oh, there it is! That's the one! That's the bottle of potassium cyanide, I presume! So, what did the accused put into the coffee? I think it's clear, don't you? Oh, God. Well, that sucked. <laughs> that didn't help us at all. My antique one sip fit. Look like he's in terrible pain and he collapsed. He took just one sip. You youngins, you waste everything. Those Java channels cost $8. I'll basically eat the cup afterwards. In the good old days, we would have drank every last drop in the cup and then died. <laughs> he's so fucking disrespectful. How dare he not drink all the poison before he died, motherfucker. Congratulations, you have earned the title of baddiest man to grace a courtroom. <laughs> so was an immediate death. I guess at least Old Bag still has the, the baddiest female. So it was an immediate death. Well, with potassium cyanide, I suppose that is possible. Possible? Or always? Oh yeah, he slumped over without so much as a twitch. I felt the java- I felt the java chino I just drank turned sour in my stomach. Oh yes, I know that feeling. And the waitress, I presume she is. That's the serving girl right there in the fish. I remember her real well. You said I remember her well in reference to the waitress. I try to forget about Sal and Hottie. Oh yeah, there's definitely worse characters in court. Well, I guess he said baddie. This is like craziest old guy. But um, yeah, Sal and Hottie definitely. <laughs> they definitely take the cake. A lot of creepy people in the series, unfortunately. <laughs> unfortunately. You said I remember her well in reference to the waitress. Did she have it? Oh my gosh. <laughs> what did she look like? Because <laughs> I don't think you look at their faces. Does she have any particular features you can identify her by? <laughs> We're just gonna bullshit that. Particular features? It's a disgrace. That's what it is. Um, sorry? You can see all the way up to her. Her. You know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry, I just had to barf a little bit. She's practically naked in that uniform! Can we please- <laughs> Can we please change the subject? It's the particular features you recognize about the waitress is her outfit. But anybody can wear just in a uniform. Even me! Oh, yes! Put it on! Put it on! <laughs> Mr. Wright, please spare the court any further mental anguish from that image. I was enjoying it. Don't get all excited, Nick. You gotta keep yourself together. I guess I got a bit carried away. Kyle, there are other things I recognize her about her, too. He seems pretty sure about himself. Oh, yeah, let's press harder, baby. He doesn't remember shit about her besides being a perv. Uh, he is so gross. <laughs> he is so fucking gross. Press harder. Sure, you saw a waitress take the coffee over to the victim. But what matters is whether that waitress was Maggie Bird or not. Quite right. Mr. Kudo, these are the features that you recognize about the defendant. I would ask you to add them to your testimony. Sure, sure, she had pink hair. <laughs> there was a ribbon in her hair and her apron straps were loose. No, she, no, she wasn't. I don't think so. Oh, she does have a ribbon in her hair. Damn it! <laughs> we're pressing it anyways. You do seem to remember several details of details about her appearance. What about the most crucial detail of all, her face? Ha! As if I wouldn't remember that! Objection. Objection. The witness noticed the straps of the accused apron. He's unlikely to make a mistake about her face. That's right, I can even tell you the color of the ribbon in her hair. It was red. So do you see there's nothing wrong with the witness's eyesight? Um, there's no doubt he remembers the waitress pretty well. What should I do? I get the feeling there's something more to this somehow. Ask about the straps. Ask about the waitress's back? Ooh. Do, do, do. He keeps bringing up the straps, so I guess maybe I'll try that. Mr. Kudo, you seem especially interested in straps. Why is that? What? The ribbon in her hair, the straps on her apron. What's the- yeah, exactly. I was like, I know it's gonna be some, some other, like, perverted thing, but I'm not totally sure what- what it is just yet. What's the fascination? Oh, fascination? Objection. People have all kinds of- <laughs> Yeah, I'm just calling out what it is. All kinds of fetishes, Trice. We don't need to embarrass the witness. Listen, you young upstarts, I haven't got some s sick strap fetish- 
Um, it kind of seemed like you do. Is there any relevance to the witness's unusual love of straps, Mr. Wright? I was just curious as to why he was so fixated on the waitress's straps. I said I haven't got a strap finish. How many times I gotta repeat myself? Very well, continue with your testimony and make it strapless. Grumble, grumble. Do you think old CD really saw Maggie do it? Well, he probably had his eye on the waitress the whole time. That's why he was there. But he was there for a cute outfit, right? Not the waitress. <laughs> I like how nicely they described this cute outfit. That's why he was there. He just loves fashion. <laughs> she makes a good point. Hey, did I just say something clever? I wonder if the waitress, Mr. Kudo, really was wa waggy. <laughs> waggy. That's what we have to figure out. Okay, let me press the other one. Okay, I'm gonna do her face. I'm almost out of coffee. This is so sad. Okay, the waitress is back. The identifying features you described are all things you would see from the back. Oh! <laughs> oh, smart! So what? Is it possible that you never saw the waitress from the front at all? Ha! He's got you there, Gramps. Oh wait, I'm not on his side. People normally talk about facial features when they're asked to describe someone. But this witness's testimony is nothing but straps and ribbons. This is harassment! I tell you, this is old phobia! I tell you, I'm not obsessed with straps or ribbons! I'm just telling you what I saw! Mr. Kudo, the court requests that you add details about any identifying features. Features you observed from the front, that is to your testimony. Sure, sure. This old man's testimony is getting longer and longer. If I can't find a hole in it soon, it'll get even longer, I bet. There wasn't anything that caught my interest about her when I saw her from the front. <laughs> How could you say that she's the most beautiful woman in the world? You didn't find anything to be distinct, but you did clearly see the witness's face, yes? No question about it! I didn't come this far to back down now! Victor Kudo never backs down! That's not the answer I was looking for, but okay. If anything, this game has definitely made me more old people phobic. <laughs> With all the creepy old people we have in it. This has turned into a matter of pride for old CD now, I guess. I wonder if he really did see Maggie's face or not. Like I thought, we need some concrete proof of this. Proof that the old guy didn't see the waitress clearly from the front. Do you think old CD really saw... I was like, what proves that he didn't see her from the front? Honestly, I was kind of expecting to show her profile. It's not the layout of the map, I don't think. Hmm. I was kind of expecting him just to say something wrong. I wouldn't even notice the ketchup stain, actually, because he said there was nothing distinguishable from the front, so maybe the ketchup stain? Probably hit his eyes. It's there for a cute outfit, it's not the waitress. Da -da 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 -da. Really saw her from the front. Okay, I think it might be the apron. I think that might be the face, but it might just be in general. There's a ribbon on her hair, aprons were loose. There wasn't anything that caught me interest about her when I saw her from the front. I feel like the ketchup stain would definitely catch anybody's interest, right? Right, right. Please, God. <laughs> Please. I don't want to burn the kitchen down again. Oh, thank God. <laughs> Mr. Kudo, I would like you to please take a look at this. Cow, that filthy thing just... That filthy thing would suit filth like you just perfectly. Actually, it reminds me of my, what my grandson looks like just after he's done eating that little bastard. Have you ever seen this before? Of course I haven't. Do you think I'd forget something as dirty as that, hum? Well, you have to win it, Clyde. Yeah, <laughs> dumbass. Got you there. What, what is it? Ever since I said you half witted cloth, there's been an eerie silence in here. <laughs> is that is that a slur now? Mr. Kudo, this apron. It is the apron worn by the defendant on the day of the poisoning. Uh And as you just said yourself, you wouldn't forget something like this. Which means if you had really seen this apron before. 
Um... Yes, you know what I'm getting at. You couldn't have possibly seen the waitress from the front! Uh, oopsie! Uh, oopsie poopsie! Uh, I'm also just a little girl! Just a little girly pop stuck in an old man's body, just like Sean. Witness, you can't just oops your way out of it! <laughs> Maybe if I try to look cute, they'll forgive me. Ah, <laughs> well, well. Looks like we finally have a genuine trial on our hands. Stop drinking coffee, Godot. You're gonna make me want more. Listen, Trite, here are the facts. On the day of the incident, there was only one waitress in the restaurant. That being the defendant, Miss Maggie Bird. Exactly. And when that one waitress put the poison in the coffee cup, this old guy was watching. Um, I hope you understand the gravity of the situation, Mr. Kudo. The fact... The fate of the defendant may rest in what you... S you remember seeing. Just tell the court exactly what you saw, Gramps. You can rely on me, Captain. My noggin's in perfect working order. I can't remember a single occasion when I forgot what a burger customer wanted. He can't remember. Probably more like he messed up so many times he's blocking it out. Oh my god. Very well, let's just... Let's test just how good your memory and attention to detail is, Mr. Kudo. Tell us what you remember about the victim. <laughs> I swear to God, if he just adds, Yes, I remember it clear as day! I saw that ketchup stain! <laughs> We're just supposed to accept it? I'll be so pissed. I hate it, honestly, when Ace Attorney does that. We, like, prove that they're lying about something, and then they're like, Oh, um, well, actually, I just forgot, silly old me! <laughs> Let me just add that to my testimony. We all forget that I committed perjury, yeehaw. He was another one of those pesky young types wearing a broken pair of spectacles. He had a newspaper in his right hand and the noisy brat kept wrestling its pages. The young man was listening to the wireless. I remember that well. Then the servant girl in the question brought over the Javachino. The little fidget the little fidget picked up the cup with his free hand and took what what does that mean? I never heard that word before. Free hand and took a sip. The testimony we have just heard it was to test how credible the witness's memory is. It seems to me that he remembers the victim in great detail. Oh yes, I hate those you-know-what types who were so vague about everything. How are we going to handle this, Nick? We only need to do one thing. We just need to prove that the old man's memory is seriously shit. <laughs> Perjury is legal in Japanifornia, but it does seem like it is. Just trip him up, you mean. Isn't that kind of cruel? I suppose, but it's what I do best. Okay. Um, probably mostly when he's like describing the victim, right? He's another of those pesky young types wearing a. It definitely wasn't broken, it was just like a little scouter thing. He had his vintage computer, man. Leave him alone. <laughs> Program. He left an eardrum. His left eardrum ruptured the day before the incident. Oh, that's cool. It added that to uh, his thing. A newspaper in his right hand, the noisy brat kept up rusting his pages, losing the wireless. Serving girl brought the Jabuchino, little What does that mean, fidget? Picked up the cup in his free hand and took a sip. I'm like honestly kinda scared this guy's gonna say like a slur or something. <laughs> like, like a slur I don't know that, that I don't know is a slur and I'm accidentally gonna say it. Okay. Hold it! Spectacles! Darn glasses! Do you one of them lenses was green and the other was broken? Newfangled rubbish, that's why I remember him so well. He did have some kind of lens over his left eye. But I wouldn't have called it a pair of glasses. Um, he seems to have been wearing some rather modern looking shades. Perhaps I should take to wearing some and rival Mr. Godot's shop. Oh, yes! Why are we flirting so much if only I could look half as sexy as Mr. Godot? Oh, yes, I like. I like an old man who likes to flirt with me. I love an old man who looks good in a scouter. Um, we better come up with something sharp and quick. Guess I'll wait and see if I should challenge him about the spectacles. Let's see if we have something uh, better. He had a newspaper in his right hand! The newspaper was a sports paper, wasn't it? Hey, young hooligan, I never- I nearly asked him, can you even read without fidgeting, huh? How was I supposed to be able to read the back page with all that wrestling going on? I need to find out if Eustain Braun retained his championship title! It was his paper, not yours. If you wanted to know so bad, why don't you buy your own? What are you looking at me like that for? How dare you judge me? Ow, oh god! Oh. 
A <laughs> child's play, I would've cut all those seeds in my mouth. Guess and Braun got beaten yesterday, by the way, anyways. The young man was listening to the wireless, I remember that whale. The wireless, the de decadent young rascal. In my day, it was one or the other, read the paper or listen to the wireless. Oh boy, and using an ear paste, it's selfish, that's what it is. It was straight in my ears, but I couldn't catch any of it. What was, was he that desperate to listen to the radio? What are you looking at me like that for? How dare you feel sorry for me? Oh, oh, stop it, stop it. Do we might need a seed counter. They had the servant girl over in question brought over the Jabuccino. You mean the waitress who you only saw from behind, right? You're one of those, are you? You never let anything go, isn't that right? Maybe, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> I don't know. Oh God, stop it! <laughs> Better not push until I've got some hard evidence. <laughs> Every time I push, he just gets thrown with more seeds. Little Fidget picked up the cup with his free hand and took a sip. I think you guys said it just means he fidgets a lot. His free hand. Yes, which hand was that? Weren't you listening before, cloth ears? I said he was wrestling a newspaper with his right hand, didn't I? His free hand was his right hand. Then which was it, you moron? Oh God, stop it! Stop it! Perhaps the great, perhaps the great Mr. Trite has three hands. Oh, I was only asking you, you know, to gang up on me and trick me like a freak. The whole point of this cross-examination is to establish just one thing. That this old guy's memory has more holes than a slice of Swiss. I guess we just need to find a contradiction in his statement somewhere, huh? I'm guessing maybe he had something in his other hand, his left hand. Anything will do, even the smallest D or was the right hand, I can't remember. We just, we just need one mistake and he's ours. Jabuccino, little fidget picked up the cup with his free hand and took a sip. Okay. He was listening. He had a newspaper in his right hand. Uh, let me see. It kind of looks like he has a newspaper in his right hand, doesn't it? Because, like, yeah. I'm, like, trying to, like, turn myself. Yeah. Kind of seems like it. Paper right hand, the noisy brat kept rustling the pages. He did doodle on it though too, but I guess he didn't have to necessarily doodle while he was in there. Man, I feel like it's these that I'm like the worst at, honestly. Just trying to find like some little contradiction. I think I just overthink it too much. Got it from the doctor before going to Travion. Photo of the kitchen. These two are in the right scene. Kept wrestling the papers. Ty's wearing a broken pair of spectacles. This seemed the wireless. I remember that. Well, serving your own question, brother Jabuccino. Little Fidget picked up the hand with his free hand and took a sip. It kind of looks like he was holding it with his right hand, though, right? The cup. Like maybe put down the newspaper and then he picked it up with his right hand? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm probably overthinking this, whatever. I'm gonna try that though. Let me double check. Girl, young man, listen to the wireless. So he's saying that both of his hands were full. Had the newspaper in his right hand. I think he had the newspaper in his right hand, and then he picked up the coffee with his right hand too. He put down the newspaper, then picked up the coffee. It's kind of like it was underneath him, right? Freehand and took a sip. Okay, whatever. I'll just um try this. I was like, there's something else that proves that, right? So crime photo. I think yeah, it looks like he was holding it with that hand. I'd say so. Right? Or does it? <laughs> or does it? Whatever. God dang it. <laughs> oh, I had a feeling. I was like, eh, probably not. Probably not. Free hand and took a sip. This thing with a 
profiles? Was a programmer, left eardrum ruptured. It's kind of weird that he was listening to something when his eardrum was ruptured, right? Does that have anything to do with anything? I think it's probably later, though. Um, we'll play this cross the Old man's memory has more holes than sliced cheese. Check the coffee cup. Covered in Maggie's contained potassium. I can't really do anything else with the coffee cup, right? So I was they gave Manfred one Parma one. I guess it looks like you would have picked it up with your right hand, I guess. Yeah, yeah, because I guess the, the hand would be on the other side if you picked it up with the other hand. Okay, so I guess that's it. Missing the wireless. Serving the girl. Yeah, yeah. He's saying that he drank from the left. Perkins spear, spectacles. Okay. Right hand. Okay, yeah. Okay, I think that's it. Oh, god dang it. I didn't mean to. <laughs> I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to press through it. Damn it, I keep doing that. Okay. Yay! Mr. Kudo, do you remember what you were told at the start of this testimony? That this was a way of testing the credibility of your memory. That was a pretty smart one. Oh no, oh no, there's nothing wrong with my memory, I tell you nothing! If I got anything wrong, I'll eat these seeds and sing the pigeon song! Oh, uh, you better start doing some vocal warm-ups then, buddy! Uh, care to tell us where this is going, Mr. Trite? According to Mr. Kudo, the victim was holding the paper in his right hand while drinking the coffee with his free hand, which could would make that his left. Cal, what is this, kindergarten? But I would like the court to please take a look at this. That's the cup the victim used, correct? Yeah, and on the rim you'll notice the mark left by the victim's lips. Yes, there is a stain left by the coffee. If you consider where the stain is, you'll clearly see that the victim was holding the cup with his right hand. But how? Well, Mr. Kudo, the court is waiting for your epic performance. <laughs> Come on! Let's hear the pigeon songs! I want you to do a little bird wings, too! He said you need those seeds and sing the pigeon song! Oh, no! <laughs> that posture, too. <laughs> the way he stands is so goofy. Mr. Kudo, I'm afraid this is simply not acceptable. You made a promise to the court and you will you will uphold it! I think the witness had better go back to the park where he- uh, WAIT! No, we were so close to getting rid of him! If you think I'm gonna stand here and listen to you tell me I'm mad, you're wrong! I don't care about that dirty coffee cup, I know what I saw! You still insist on your testimony! That young brat was holding the cup in his left hand! <laughs> about to have to do like a Danganronpa. What was it? What's the final thing called in Danganronpa when you're like having to do the musical part? I don't know why. Like argument breakdown or something? I don't know why it's like not coming to me. Argument armament. Armament? I can't remember. Oh yes, no question. I'm a good law by citizen, I am. It's that dead young hot body, you. You spiky hair yahoo. You were at fault. Me? Thank you, old man. We've heard quite enough from you already. Judge, you're probably like a year younger than him. Come on, let's be real. Don't call me old man, old man! Being around for 68 years, I have. You can't ignore me! Listen to what I've got to say! Panic talk action, that's what it is. I'm sorry, Mr. Kudo, but sure, why not hear a little more? Oh, sure, why not hear a little bit more? Mr. Kudo, what, what if you want to do it, then I guess it's okay. But this is my 16th cup of coffee. So this is your final stand. Thank you, Captain! You can rely on Victor! <laughs> Left hand or right hand? The boy's wearing the earpiece on the same side as the green lens! Wait, wearing the earpiece on the same side as the green lens of his specs! He kept fiddling with it all the time. He was fiddling with it just before he picked up the coffee, too. And then he used the same hand to pick up the cup. His left hand. <laughs> I feel like we already proved it enough. What else is there to say? We know that the victim was wearing an unusual monocle over his left eye. It wasn't a mon- It wasn't a monocle. Monocle, your uh, honor. 
It was a small computer monitor often used by program. <laughs> I still imagine with the fucking keyboard on his arm. Looks like a looks like a Yu-Gi-Oh card disc thing. It was very, very popular. Everybody's using these mobile computers. A monitor? You mean like a television screen? The inside of the lens is a screen that displays computer data. It's called an HMD. It's a common tool in the victim's line of work. HD TV, DVD, CD, all these newfangled letters drive me mad, but they don't matter. I know what I saw, I'm telling the truth. It's true, he doesn't seem to be lying. And those are the facts, and good old black and white. Okay. <laughs> Man, I feel like we already proved it enough. But here we go, we still gotta do it. Boys wearing the spectacle on the same side, wearing the earpiece. Okay, let me look at the profile. I think it is the left side, right? Yeah, programmer, left ear, left eardrum. Oh, the left eardrum was rumshered, you dumbass old man. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, can I go ahead and do this or is he gonna get mad at me? I'm kind of old. I'm over him. <laughs> like, if I can skip some of his dialogue, I'm cool with it. I feel like it might not work though. I probably gotta press him more before it allows me to do it. But like, why would he be wearing it in this fucking ruptured eardrum? Oh wait, oopsie. <laughs> Press the wrong thing, okay. Oh yes! Take that! No more extra dialogue for you, old man! I'm not sure what the relevance of this is, but... Hell yeah, let's fucking go! <laughs> Mr. Kudo, there is something very strange about your observations of the victim. What? You say he was wearing the earpiece on the same side as the HMD. No question, you can lock me- Please, uh, let, I'm taking you on that offer, old man. You can lock me up if I'm wrong. It was his left ear without a doubt. I can only see that side of his head from where I was sitting. I don't think so. What did you say? You're no doubt unaware of this fact, Mr. Kudo. That might be the best I've cooked in a while. <laughs> Just my hatred for the old man. <laughs> it gave the answer to me right away. But the victim couldn't hear with his left ear. His eardrum was ruptured. Um, the traces of medication for his condition were found in his ear canal. That's right, it's impossible that the victim was wearing his earpiece in his left ear. Because he couldn't even hear in that ear. Uh, is that true, Captain? <laughs> it is. Uh, pa. Pee pee pigeon! Home! Pretty pigeon! Home! <laughs> is he singing? Home, yeah, pretty pigeon! Order, order! This witness's testimony is completely unreliable. He only saw the waitress from behind. And he claims the victim was wearing an earpiece when he knows when we know this eardrum was ruptured. Well, Mr. Godot. Ah, oh, I've been cooked. Ah, oh, Weeby's finally cooking. A single drop of milk is all it takes to destroy the pure black magic in the cup. This old man is my drop of milk. Captain, are you forsaking me? Are you calling me a drip? This is the victim's coffee cup in which the potassium cyanide was found, please. Is it time for Jean yet? Can we have my boy? Can he come out? The mark on the rim clearly shows the victim picked it up right with picked it up with his right hand. I'll never back down, I know I'm right! That lad drank his javachino with his left hand! Let, let him put let me put you out of your misery. Clearly the victim used both hands. He took a sip with the cup held in his right hand and then switched to his left. There would be a stain on the other side, right? Oh my god! They said he only took one sip too, you dumbasses! That's what the old man saw. Godot, come on. Let him, let him die. <laughs> it's over. Impossible. The witness has already testified on numerous occasions that the victim died immediately after taking just one sip of the coffee. Which hand the victim used to pick up his cup is irrelevant, your honor. Oh, he is pissed. The fact still stands. I'm literally the smoke is because I'm cooking him. I'm fucking steaming him right now. The fact still stands with one hand or the or the other, Miss L drank the poison coffee. Like this! Did you do another excuse to drink coffee, man? Sadly, Mr. Dego Godot, that doesn't wash. The point of the testimony was to establish whether the witness's memory is credible. And the results are clear. This man is senile and crazy! 
The testimony has given this witness. The testimony given by this witness is useless. <laughs> Gasp. I believe it is time to conclude today's proceedings. I am satisfied that the witness is not deceiving the court. But to be frank, his testimony is a farce. Did you have to be so frank? Take that, you pompous old fogey! I'm sorry, Mr. Kudo, you can't reach me from here. <laughs> I'm ordering the defense and the prosecution to investigate this case further. Oh, wow, that was a short trial. I guess we'll see. It might get something. Something might get, you know, happen to push it further, but that was really short. That is all for now. This court is adjourned. And here it is. Always something. What? God, can you stop? Shut up. Shut up. There's nothing left. You senile old man. Give it up. If we stop now, where does that leave me? Am I going to prison? Leave you, Mr. Kudo. Thanks to that blue suit of young upstart over there. I'm just a bumbling old man who can't even dot his T's or cross his... <laughs> he is doing it backwards. How is your bad memory my fault? I'm sorry, Mr. Kudo, but there's nothing I can do. Can my mouth shut up until now? <laughs> there's something else this court should know! What? There's more? <laughs> to be perfectly honest, it might not be anything, but I want another chance! I want another crack at you, you young shark! Please, no, please stop. Me, he's looking at me like I'm some sort of evil shogun. Well, everyone, what do you say to one fight? No, boo! Get off the stage! One final showdown! The final chapter of this eccentric old man's scrapbook! Sorry, Gramps. I've already had my 17th cup of coffee. Please do a Sonic Boy reaction. Oh yeah, I was planning on doing that. I got so distracted with other stuff. <laughs> God, I feel like so many things have been happening recently and just like, I don't know, like stuff that I cover, like got more digital circus, got so much Helliverse, I got into has -been. it's just been so much. <laughs> I got into FNAF, but I was planning on doing that. I should still do it. What have you got to lose, Captain? I've given you all the Java Chino you want if you come to my house after- <laughs> What? If you come to my house after the trial, I may be six to- Wait, what the fuck? What the- What? What? Who is he- What? What if- Okay, I got distracted. I was talking about Sonic lore. Was he saying this t <laughs> to Godot? Oh my god. But I'm still a man. And a man has needs, Mr. Godot. That's enough, witness. I believe we'll be quicker for the court to just hear your testimony. You bet! Much, much quicker! I can't believe this is happening. Hi, oh, you better get ready, youngster! I get the picture. <laughs> I was like, old man bi confirmed? This is not the bi con we want. Get the picture. Just quit throwing those seeds at me, would you? He's gotta be using some sort of infamous ammo code with that box of seeds. Final showdown. The final countdown! Oh my god. First of all, I want to stress that this might be nothing. I'm not too sure myself. The young boy slumped over the table as he took a sip of his javachino. Well, the clumsy idiot upset the vase. He knocked it right over. You fucking liar. <laughs> you fucking liar. I don't believe you. I don't believe you. Do you like that guy? Why are you making me go through this? I don't want to see you anymore. Get off my fucking screen, you dumb ass old man. <laughs> oh my god. Clumsy idiot upset the face. He knocked it right over. It broke and the strip of cloth covered the whole table completely so Well, how about that? Turn things. <laughs> I can't get this man out of here. Get this man out of here. I'm done with you. I'm done with your fucking dumb ass. Is that all? <laughs> yes, that's all. I remember it perfectly. You know me. It's the sad. It's getting sad at this point, man. You're down to poor old defenses, man. No, we're not doubting you, Mr. Kudo. Don't you have the feeling there's a question hanging over everybody's lips, Nick? Yeah, so what, uh, probably. That's all I can think of, and I have to cross-examine this guy. <laughs> You're a bird brain, that's why it's- That's all you can think of! Oh my god. At least we know exactly what to do, we don't have to hear any extra dialogue from him. Let's get this- Let's get this man out of here. 
First of all, losing myself, young boy slumped over. He turned to the well. The clumsy getting upset the face. He knocked it right over. Yeehaw, you fucking. <laughs> you can't remember anything, and that's okay. And that's okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Objection! Objection! Well, at least I'm cooking. At least I'm cooking. My old man phobia has left me cooking this Michelin star dinner for you guys. Mr. Kudo, this is a photograph of the crime scene. Huh, so what? Look carefully at the table. The vase is there. Intact. What? Lost your tongue, granddad. Uh, son? <laughs> oh no, granddad of yours, hopscotch! Oh, oh! Enough! This has gone on too long! If you throw any more seeds in this courtroom, the cleaners will be here. Oh! What is it now? Oh, I just remembered something. Yes, go on. The face of my old, my old dog from my childhood. It's been so long since I remembered what he looked like. The broken face. Uh, it was on my table. <laughs> what? Oh, uh, well, you see? It startled me when that young lad collapsed, so I stood up. That must have been when it fell over. The vase on my table, I mean. The vase, the vase on your table. Oh yes, it was on my table. And that's how my groin. <laughs> oh, why would you say it like that? Oh my God, that's the worst way to describe that. And that's how my groin came to be completely soaked. <laughs> Thank you for that description. <laughs> oh my goodness. Get him out of here. Thank you, Mr. Kudo. You've certainly earned your kudos for today. Oh, um, I'd like to ask a question now. Have I, uh, have I been any use at all? Perhaps that's something you should reflect on yourself, Mr. Kudo. Oh, wait, no, stop it, no. If that's the case, I got more to say. <laughs> Oh, yes! Oh, please, God, no! Get his ass out of here! Bailiff, escort the witness out of the courtroom! Wait, listen to me! Listen to me! <laughs> oh, I need some seeds to throw at him. Well, we seem to have been considerably sidetracked. And I am still not in a position to deliver a verdict. The defendant has not been positively identified as the waitress in question. Additionally, there are two disparities in the testimony we have heard thus far. The mark on the coffee cup that the victim supposedly drank from with his left hand. And the earpiece, which was inserted into his left ear, out of which he couldn't hear. Wow, Nick! You did it! I therefore require both the defense and the prosecution to further and get investigate the facts. Yes, your honor. <laughs> one more thing! He comes running in. There is one more thing before I call today's session to an end. Oh god, one more thing, your honor? The witness we just heard from, please ban him from the premises! He is the most inconsistent, he is most incons- insistent that his testimony should be of use. Oh, the poem or whatever. So he summarized it according to his statement. Oh, a new one? Um, okay. <laughs> you may each have a copy of it if you wish. Oh, whatever, the prosecution doesn't need props like that. Okay, was really mad, huh? Yeah, I would be too. <laughs> Very well. Here you are then, Mr. Wright. There are three copies. My own, yours, and Mr. Godot's. Yes, your honor. When the incident occurred, I broke the vase at my seat. <laughs> I'm Shawi. <laughs> Don't you know it starts with Shawi? I'm sorry. This isn't a piece of testimony. <laughs> More like a five-year-old's apology. What the heck are we supposed to do with three copies? <laughs> That is all! The court is adjourned! Okay, that was kind of cute. You're still a weird old creep, but the little note was kind of funny. <laughs> I'm shall we? <laughs> Guys, don't you know that it starts with Sawi? Sawi? It's like one of my least favorite songs in the whole show, but it's like become such a meme. I feel like I end up singing that song randomly more than the other ones from Has Been. Because it just fits so many circumstances. Um, so how'd you think the trial went this morning? How do I think it went? It got a bit crazy in there. I just wonder if that killed our chances. 
Yeah, I guess it did get out of hand. Mr. Kudo's testimony did nothing to help us. Plus, now we don't even know the identity of the waitress who laced the coffee. Yeah, I'm gonna continue playing because um, I don't honestly know if I'll be able to play next weekend because we're moving and my parents are coming into town. So um, I feel like probably gonna be too busy. So I'll try to stream for, you know, a decent bit today, at least like four hours. All I know is what old Mr. Kudo saw, the apron straps and the ribbon. And that victim was wearing an earpiece when his eardrum was ruptured. Oh yeah, you can learn to the eardrum piece, I think, in his other ear, right? Yeah, yeah, because he's like laying, so I think it would be his right ear. Talk about a terrifying case of contradictions. Oh yeah, she also has been character as a member emoji. That's true, I should. Recommend watching the Sonic timeline made by J Reviews or the Leaderboard. Oh, okay, interesting. I'll have to look into that. Time to play doctor and find time to play doctor and find ourselves a cure then, huh? Yeah. We've gotta find one one for Maggie or she's gonna have a terminal case of guilty. Okay, let's see if Maggie is there, right? Oh wait, <laughs> I went to the wrong place. <laughs> oh well, we can talk to Gumshoe, I guess. Looks like Gumshoe's not here, or not. Never mind that, what's going on? It feels different in here somehow. Um, you think? Yeah, everyone seems to be on edge. What are you doing? Call in, call in the officers for the briefing, quick! Can't you shut down the station server? Chief, quit playing on the internet! Put my email pin pal! <laughs> what the fuck? 1337 odds and princesses! Save it for later, I'm turning it off now! No, odds and princesses! Everyone keeps busy in here, huh? Keeping busy, more like panicking if you ask me. Something's going on, something big. What is going on? Can I talk to the chief? This must be the chief of the detectives here. He looks lost. Now the power in his computer has been cut out. Oh well, I guess I'll just have to write her a real letter and send an email. Alternatively, you could write off some reports. Uh, just a suggestion. Dear 1337, as in princess. How are you? <laughs> I'm okay. How was the show last night? Um, wow, what an awesome job. Maybe I should send my resume and become a chief. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh my god. That must be one of the detectives. He's mumbling something to himself. Even pickpockets can have their pockets picked. That's a keeper. Better go. Better to go with something that doesn't sound too much like a slogan. What are you, What is going on? He must be coming up with a slogan for a crime prevention campaign. Is Gumshoe the most, like... <laughs> Is he the most reliable detective here? Okay, let's back it up, I guess. Let's see if Maggie's here. I guess Maggie's still in questioning. But we've got questions to ask her, too. Maggie! Maggie! Keep it down, Maya. This isn't a playground, you know. Man, really? Where are we supposed to go? Très bien. Can I see my boy, Jean? What? No! Where is- <laughs> Please, God, don't let it be only the park that's available. I cannot talk to that old man anymore. Empty as usual. Yeah, and it's lunchtime, too. That's it. Come on. Come on. Hey, that sounds like... Now, just call an eight, pal. Oh, thank God. Come on. I know you can. He is getting really worked up about something. No, that's the wrong number. Ah, oh, it looks like an eight would have only netted me five bucks anyways. Oh, what a ripoff. Okay, is he doing lotto tickets? Um, what's the problem, Detective Gumshoe? Huh? Oh, it's you. I, uh, was, uh, ha, I was just, uh, ha, 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 ha. I was just listening to the radio, pal. To the radio? Hey, Detective Gumshoe's having lunch here. He is, and he's having the twin tea set. Ha, ha, ha. What can I say? The food here is so good! Okay, I might actually- I'm gonna get a snack really quickly. I'll be right back. I don't think the music's copyrighted, but you guys can spend more time with Cherokun, although I'll be back in like two seconds.
Okay, I just want to get a protein shake. I was starting to feel a little hungry. Oh no, wait, let me... I think this is about what it's not right. Okay, cool. Can't wait for Weedy to meet that character. Hmm, interesting. Furiously making out with Chirakun at the last hurrah. <laughs> this is so sad. This is so fucking sad, dude. <laughs> Oh my god, okay. <laughs> Let's talk. Today's trial. This is a nightmare! How am I supposed to look Maggie in the eye now, pal? Dude, oh, she does kind of hate you now. Oh my god, my mic stand is kind of messed up too. Look at that. You really drove her into a corner, you know. You always blow my testimony. Why of all days didn't you do it today? Sorry, there just weren't any holes in it <laughs> for once. Usually your testimonies are like Swiss cheese, but it was the old man's this time. Swiss cheese? We have preferred crumbly like aged parmesan. Does sound more sophisticated. Anyways, this case has already been ruled on. There shouldn't be any holes left to find. So did Nagi say anything to you? About me, I mean. Well, um, how did she put it again? I can't believe Detective Gumshoe. I fucking hate him. I never want to see him in my life. Um, oh no, you're telling him? I thought you were gonna at least try to sugarcoat it. She's stupid, she'll forget in a little bit. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. oh no! He just ran out of the, ran out of the micro, ran out of it crying. Oh, the game's louder than usual? Um, maybe it's 17? Oh yeah, yeah, okay, I got it confused, I think, with when I'm recording um, Hell of a Boss. I got the sounds, the, like, mixing confused. I think that's good. Please, Detective Gumshoe, I didn't mean. Why, why is this happening? He's banging his head against the wall. Nick, we gotta help him. Oh man, poor Gumshoe. <laughs> oh, poor thing. So, did you like the twin tea set? I've never paid that much money for lunch before. I was so nervous my hands were shaking. Um, so how did it taste? Like shit. <laughs> 20 bucks, I guess. I don't know how to describe it. Really, it was... Ah, uh, delicate. Delicate? You mean you liked it? It didn't taste bad to you? Um, what's the matter with him? Looks like he's thinking. That's it! I've been trying to think of the right word to describe the taste. And I just realized, it's bad! That's what it tasted bad! <laughs> he's so stupid. Oh my god, all two brain cells working so hard together. Sigh. It's just kind of hard to admit it to yourself when you paid 20 bucks for it, you know? Maybe you should have found out about the price after he had finished eating. Hey, Nick, maybe that's why Glen L came here. Maybe you heard about the Super Fierce Twin Tea Set. If by fierce you mean fearsome. Speaking of Glen L, that reminds me. I still hardly know anything about the guy. Um, why don't we ask Detective Gumshi what he knows, seeing that he's here. Okay. I guess we can ask him after the radio. Um, so what were you all excited about earlier? Huh? That's right, you said you were listening to the radio or something. Oh, that, that was nothing. I, I wasn't excited, Baka! Come on, Detective Gumshoe, you can tell little old me. What were you listening to? Nothing, really. It was just the, um, daily exercise show. Oh my god, did I really get a psyche lock for this? What the? Psyche lock for this? Uh -huh, um, this lunch of special ops is sure is great. Love it so much. Then, then why are there tears coming out of your eyes? No, it's, it's really, it's, it's so good. Just tears of joy. So much joy. Okay, let's uh, present Elg to him. And this guy was a real programming genius. And they called him the walking computer at the place where he worked. Um, what happens when he crashes, though? Does he just stop moving all of a sudden? Oh, he wasn't literally a computer, Maya. <laughs> Anyways, there's nothing between Maggie and the victim. Yeah, that's what we found out yesterday, too. Hey, Detective Gumshoe, don't you have any information that's a bit more fun? Um, fun? I, uh, oh, I know. So, have you paid a visit to where Mr. Elg works yet? You might as well. Okay. His workplace, where's that? 
A computer firm called Blue Screens Inc. or something like that. Oh yeah, they mentioned it before. His scouter was green though, right? <laughs> that's not, that's not on brand. Sounds like a real stable company. This could be fun, Nick, let's go. Computers aren't really my thing, Maya. We'll be fine. I know all about high tech stuff. I wonder about that. It's just around the corner from this joint. You should go take a look. A computer firm called Blue Screens Inc, huh? Okay, cool. That's a lead, if I've ever heard one. That means we don't have to talk to the old man anymore. Oh my god, that posture! <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> you may not like it, but this is the ideal body time. <laughs> so I looked like during some of my Danganronpa and other streams. <laughs> I've been trying to be better about it though. But trying to be better. Blue screens. Wow, this place is so high tech. You can almost smell the electricity in the air. It is a computer firm, Maya. They can't work without electricity, you know. How are you? Oh, never mind. Okay, hi, queen. <laughs> Sorry for giving you the Taria voice. Um, excuse you, hello. Um, hello. I'm sorry, access is restricted to authorized personnel only. Is she a robot? This is a computer programming laboratory. Okay, I'm gonna see if I'm Delulu about this or not. Was this blue? Oh, his was blue. It's like a bluish greenish thing. I was like, is his green and all of theirs is blue? Am I on to something here? I guess it is kind of blue. There are far too many trade secrets that could be unlocked. Wow, what secrets? Everything you see here is classified. No information can leave this building. Understood. Who is this woman? She's like a robot from some kind of whacked educational show. My name is Lisa Basil. I'm the computer company director. Director? She's human? She seems more like a ghost. <laughs> is that what they were going for? Ghosts in a shell. <laughs> Got it. And that thing over her eye, isn't that the same device as Glenn Elg's? That's the DMH, right? Nice try, but it's the other way around, Maya. The HMD. All of my programs here at Blue Screens Inc. are supplied with HDMs. Then do you write programs too? No, I just enjoy wearing this. And I look pretty. That is basically it. They are pretty cool. I wouldn't mind one. The Alistair Bob cut. She does gonna have that, doesn't she? Okay, Blue Screens Inc. So, what exactly is this firm's business? I would like to sim simplify it. Oh, Lisa Basil. Wait, Lisa Basil is another palindrome name. Oh, interesting. I will try to simplify it so that you can understand. All the people that work here have those types of names. We analyze the data management systems required by certain branches of industry and then deliver optimum operating systems and source level components to them. Uh, what? You lost me on the corner of analyze and management. It doesn't matter. They analyze stuff. You got that much right. The software we produce is distributed on CDs. CDs? Yes, compact disc, digital optical storage media. Of course, CDs are used for software as well as me. God, this is so... Not anymore, it's not. Thank you, Dan Gaming Fan. Lisa Basil and Glenn Elgar, both palindromes. Yeah, I saw that. That's cool. I was like, is that uh, all the people who work here are just like that, maybe? Kind of seems like it so far. I want to see if this is going to be a mustache. Oh my god, it is. I don't know if y'all can see that, though. <laughs> Protein shake sometimes gives me, like, a little a mustache. Ask one of them what they are doing. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, I mean, hello, sir. Excuse me, what are you working on right now? I'm researching the impact of time, slicing on the logical axis of the shared variables, obviously the influence of spawn time, perfect of the photodimensional, the gold blood variables, memory the overhead, the vitally important to the success of the execution. Well, you get the idea. This is the sort of thing we are involved in. Did you good people follow all of that? Um, yeah. Your blink smile just said otherwise, Maya. What happened? Do you guys care that he died? You know what happened, uh, right, Miss Basil? You mean about Glenn being poisoned? <laughs> yes, I know. This is so sad. Alexa, play Despacito. It is terrible. Can you tell us anything that might be helpful? 
I don't think so. A police officer was here earlier, too. Does he not make a lot of money? It seems like he would make a lot of money working here, right? But I couldn't tell him anything either because... The waitress who committed the crime has nothing to do with Blue Screens, Inc. <laughs> oh, I wonder if she's gonna be a witness, too, on the stand. How about Mr. Eld's desk? Have you cleared it out already? No, not yet. It's this one right in front of you. Oh. Oh, is he do like gambling a lot? Is the race horse? If there's anything that might be useful to you, you are welcome to take it. I guess there might be a clue here somewhere. Okay. I guess we can try and examine it. Probably present her some stuff later, too. Whoa! Look at this desk, Nick! What a mess! Looks pretty average to me. But you can't get any work done with everything all over the place like this. You think? Real whiz kids can work under any condition, you know. <laughs> Just trying to hint that I should tidy my desk more. I'll clean up my desk when Maya stops asking silly questions. <laughs> no hurry, then. Hey! This calendar! What about it? Is this another hint about tidying? You could forget it! Someone's marked December 3rd in red pen. December 3rd. That's the day Mr. Elg was murdered. Is there anything else? Yeah. Um, it says, meet with... Oh! The tiger! <laughs> I cringe doing that myself. The tiger? Glint's calendar added to the court record. Okay. That was who he was meeting with, too. Oh, anything else here? Okay, the stuff at least. Wow, look at this mess. Looks like they're all betting tickets. Okay, he really is into gambling a lot. What kind of betting ticket? I guess he does make a lot of money, but he might just be like addicted to gambling or something. Because uh, it does seem like he's really into it. Let's grab that on my lipstick. Oopsie. For betting on which horse will win a given race through horse racing tickets. Oh wow, his drawers are full or stuffed full of these. Looks like they're all losing tickets though. Flynn Elg's losing horse race. Racing. Tickets gathered up. Horse racing betting tickets. Found in Glen Elg's desk. There's only over 500 of them. Wow. It's over 500! This many tickets would get you, what, a buck down at the recycling center? I didn't know you were so hard up that you'd try to profit from the dead, Nick. I'm just taking them as evidence, Maya! Okay, anything else? I guess there's these guys, too. I could try to talk to them. Let's talk to this guy. He's really pounding that keyboard, isn't he? Wow! I bet that's where the pro and programmer comes from, huh? I guess I shouldn't be resting on my laurels. Gotta expand my skill set and all that. Yeah, that's a good idea. Maybe I can become Old Seed's... Old Seedy's apprentice? And what about your spirit medium training? She doesn't mean the old... Old man, right? <laughs> right? Right, Maya? Hey, look, Nick! It's a supercomputer! It looks like it's really smart and wise, doesn't it? Computers are only as smart as the humans who make them. Or use them, Maya. That explains why we don't use a computer in our office! You work there too, Maya! Yeah, but at least I'm... Please, do not argue about something so trivial. Otherwise, the computer will laugh at you. <laughs> ha ha ha! Like I will. She said she'd laugh at us, Nick. She's a human, Maya, not a computer! Uh, I think. Uh, I think. I guess I can present some stuff to her, maybe? Let's see here. Do I have anything interesting? Does she know anything about this? Um, would you mind taking a look at this? I'm sorry, that data is super, super admin restricted desktop access password protected. Super admin restricted desktop as blah, blah, blah. This is madness! No, Maya. <laughs> this is Sparta! She won't tell us unless we say the right word code. A code word, huh? Sesame! <laughs> that is correct. It's not Sesame, then. It must be her mother's maiden name. That's how it always is. There's no point in having a password if it's always the same thing, Maya. I guess she just doesn't want to talk about this. Maybe we should focus on asking about Glen Elg. What do you say? Okay, I'll just switch to his profile, then. Um, about Mr. Elg. He was a top programmer. I would even say he was a genius. But he did suffer from one or two bugs in his personality. Oh, like what? He was a bit of a uh, loser, one might describe. Perhaps that would be the best way to describe it. 
That is what got him into trouble. <laughs> What's the matter? He was a top programmer. I would even say he was a genius. So he was ready. Really no trouble at all. A model employee. Hey, wait a minute. Just now you said something about him being in trouble. We've got to find out what this trouble was exactly. Okay. Well, don't we kind of know the gambling stuff? Well, she didn't answer to that, right? Uh, god dang it. I was hoping maybe she would mention, like, oh, his issues if we presented that, but I guess not. Oh, man. What else could we try to show? Nah. Damn it. <laughs> She's not gonna listen to anything. Okay. Do I have anything else I can present? <laughs> Absolutely not a robot. H question mark question mark. I don't know if there's really anything else I can present. Oh, he is a loser, baby. Loser, baby, a loser, goddamn baby, you're a. Okay, um. Let me just, just try to move. I don't know. I might present her. Uh, let's go here. God dang it. Hopefully, please let it be. <laughs> please let it be Tiger. I don't see any sign of Mr. Kudo, do you? Oh, a new topic opened up? Okay, I'll have to go back then. Maybe he went to buy another ton of bird seeds. I was kind of hoping he wouldn't be here anyways. <laughs> At least not for now. Besides, any more seeds today and I'm liable to turn into a real phoenix. <laughs> okay, I guess I'll move back. Oh, pfft, I didn't mean to take a screenshot. <laughs> My bad! There we go, Glenn's troubles. Um, about Mr. Elg, was he in some kind of trouble? I'm sorry, why would you think that? I thought you said something about it just now. You said he got himself into trouble because he was a bit of a loser, baby. A loser. <laughs> oh, three locks. I kind of have a feeling she's probably gonna get some psyche locks. I guess Mr. Elg is like every other man with his own pile of secrets. Okay. I don't know if I really have enough to... I guess I could try to start questioning her. Just to see how far in I can get. Being you. Do you... Was the scooter at the park? I don't know if I really saw that. If it did. If it was there. Take that! Take that! We have some of his troubles, at least. But I don't know if we have everything. Because it's three, so it's kind of a lot. So, how about you tell me what kind of trouble Mr. Elg was in? I'm sorry, sir, but we don't deal with troubleshooting here. Perhaps you would like to speak to someone in customer service. What's she talking about? I guess I'd better just take a shot and see where it gets me. Miss Basil, let me ask you something. Did Mr. Elg's trouble have something to do with this? Okay, cool. So, at least got that. Racing horse. Take that! Take that! What is this? A bunch of horse racing tickets, all losing ones. With that many tickets, you could get one dollar at the recycling center. You good people are very, very bad. Cashing in on others' misfortune is immoral. <laughs> is that a whiff of hypocrisy I smell? But what is the relevance- But what is the relevance of these t tickets? The victim, Mr. Glenel, he had a gambling habit, didn't he? I don't think that's a logical conclusion based on the facts. Everyone likes to go to their races from time to time. Yeah, but not everyone buys this many tickets. Anyways, I don't believe that proves anything on its own. You're right, but I'm not through yet. Mr. Elg's gambling habit wasn't restricted to horse races, was it? It was also Lotto! Wait, do I have any other Lotto tickets? Or is it just that one? Take that! Take that! The lottery horse racing, he bought a bunch, a, bu uh, a lot of tickets. A, a lot of tickets. Lo a lot of lotto tickets. And lost a lot of times. That's gotta have hurt his wallet pretty bad, don't you think? Oh, she's sweating. It's kind of weird to see her cracking a little bit since she is so robotic. Maybe bad enough to be the cause of some pretty serious trouble, perhaps. No. Gasp. You are right. Glenn did have a gambling habit. You good people must not follow his example, do you understand? Trust me, even if I wanted, I don't exactly have the money to buy any. 
But if you win, there's a problem, isn't there? And Glenn has a winning ticket, didn't he? For half a million dollars. Yes, but... It's hard to imagine how he could have been in trouble then, isn't it? I feel like if he would have just, like, worked normally, he could have made, like, 500,000. I guess I don't really know exactly how much he was making per year, but you're, he's, like, a big-time programmer. He probably made, like, 100k per year or something. It's like, man, just keep keep on the grind, man. But I guess he was addicted, so that's it's not really that easy to kind of, like, overcome it that way. Or with that mindset. It's true that Mr. Elg won half a million dollars in the end. But in the end, it didn't even matter. That was his first stroke, stroke of good luck. He was in deep trouble before that. Deep trouble? What do you mean? Mr. Elg's real problem was, was with someone or something more terrifying and ferocious. Oh, he probably owed money to the tiger. Take that! Mr. Elg met- he did seem kind of like a Yakuza. Mr. Elg met with someone on the day he was killed. He even made a note on his calendar about the meeting. Meet with a tiger. What is the relevance of that? Are you trying to suggest Glenn was meeting with him to discuss his debt? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. But I have never heard anything about this tiger before. Maybe he's not- <laughs> What?! Maybe he's not even human. Maybe he really is a tiger. My computing system cannot comprehend this. I'm no programmer, but does she really expect me to buy such messed up logic? In that case, I think it's time to introduce you to the tiger, which I do not have a profile of. <laughs> okay, I don't have enough evidence yet. Gosh, this is a big one. I guess I need gumshoes in the meantime. I kind of forgot what gumshoes was, but it was only one, so... Let's do it! <laughs> Take that! <sighs> You're a loser, baby, a loser, but just maybe. All right, Detective Gunshu, tell me the truth. What were you listening to? No way, pal. Now that you've made a big thing out of it, I'm gonna tell you. I'm not gonna tell you. We'll see about that, pal. Considering all the noise you were making while you were listening, it's pretty clear what kind of radio program it was. I would say it's related to. Oh, horse races. Take that. Take that! Well, detective? Yeah, that's it, pal. You got me. Uh, really? Wait, what was it? I thought it was horse racing. Huh, maybe I don't have it. <laughs> well, my bad. My bad. Maybe I didn't have it. Then how come I'm still seeing the lock? Guess I was wrong. Huh. I thought I did have to do it, but... Oh, maybe it's a lotto? The radio. That's it. Come on. Come on. Call an 8, pal. You know you can. No, it's the wrong... Okay, yeah, the lotto. Never mind. So obvious. I better ask... <laughs> it's so fucking obvious. Pretty clear what kind of radio program. Well, you know they're both gambling. Take that! Take that! I'm right, aren't I? You were listening to the lottery results, weren't you? You thought you'd try to win big, just like Glen L did. It's... It's like you can see right through me! I like how he was so cool admitting to the horse gambling thing, but not... Not the lotto. See, pal? That's why I said it was nothing. Okay, the radio. I'm usually pretty lucky, so I figured I'd give it a try. What's with everyone in the lottery? Why does this make me want to buy a lotto ticket? <laughs> I feel like it's like an advertisement or something. So how'd it go? I won 50 cents, but the card I bought was a dollar. Uh-uh. It'd be better to win nothing at all than half a lousy buck. I was so mad. I feel like whenever I do do like lottos or like, I don't know. Um, what is like those penny like gambling machines? It's like I'll always, like I'll win, but <laughs> It's like I'll spend like, I don't know, like 50 cents and it'll be like, you won! 10 cents. <laughs> yeah, I know the feeling. I bought the same kind of ticket as Mr. Elg, see? And they've got this special radio show where they announce the winning numbers. They even do the drawings live on the air. It's intense, pal! I guess that's probably what he was listening to, yeah. I bet that's what Mr. Elg was listening to on the day he was killed. Yeah, yeah, what time is it now? Uh, it's- it's just after 1.30. 
are the lottery results always broadcasted? Always broadcast at the same time? Yeah, look, I got this fly when I bought the ticket. Millionaire Radio. How to not become a millionaire. Experience the most thrilling 10 minutes of your life every Monday at 1.30. Okay. Millionaire Radio, that sounds cool. What was the death or whatever? Oh, between 1.30 and 2.30, and Millionaire Radio starts at 1.30. And it's only 10 minutes long, so it's gonna be important somehow. I wanna try it, Nick! No, then buy a ticket, Maya, with your own money! <laughs> Come on! Please! Pretty please! Apparently everyone's listening to the show now. That's because everyone wants money. They say the victim, Glenn Elk, was really into gambling. Yep, you can't beat gambling. <laughs> Maya, stop it! I love it too! I won $500 last night playing cards with Nick. We were playing for money? Of course! You'd better pay up. You're a smart one, waiting for a cop to be present before asking for the cash. Oh my god, girl! Girl! Okay, never mind. I guess, uh... Hey, I thought you said you were gonna help us out! I can't help you if I don't have any info. Yeah, I suppose the retrial was only has only just begun. What was the other thing I need to present to the girl? Oh, I need to present the profile of Tiger, so I think I gotta run into him again, right? Do I have anything else to present to um to Gumshoe? I don't think so. I <laughs> can't with this fucking note. <laughs> when the incident occurred. <laughs> I broke the vase of my seat. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Okay, I don't think I got anything else to present to Gumshoe. Besides... Is that thing real, pal? Why does everyone keep asking me that? I wonder what this phony of yours is like. He had Maggie found guilty of murder, doesn't that tell you? It tells me the guy is cruising for a bruising! You're really caring, aren't you, Detective Gumshoe? About Maggie, I mean. Oh, you know what? There's this really cute Stolas, um, uh, like a moat that I saw on Discord. Maybe I'll add that one to the members, uh, like, uh, moats. It's so cute. He has a little tongue. I was like, <laughs> I love it so much. It's so adorable. Um, what was I gonna do? Oh, yeah, I was gonna see if, uh, my phony shows up at Vitamin Square. Oh, hey, the bike is here, though, right? He's gotta be around here somewhere. Maybe Maya will give me some comments on it. Hey, check this out. I guess it's a scooter, technically, not a bike. I wouldn't get too close to that if I were you. Otherwise, you might be in for a shock. My phony must be lurking someplace nearby. Just imagine! A tiger loose in the city! Meanwhile, the real phoenix is like an abandoned chick lost in a vast urban jungle. Huh? And don't worry, someday you'll grow up and become a ferocious tiger too. Or a duck. And don't lose hope! Why is she trying to pep talk me into becoming my phony? So I try to add like one has been and then one hell of a boss emote since uh, I feel like those have both become pretty big on my channel. Okay, let's try the kitchen. Here we go. January 7th. Huh? Uh, Mr. Armstrong's talking to someone. Oh, her! I'll be back next month. Oh, we natural mint. I will be waiting for you. Is he like. Is it like his sister or something? He's like trying to help pay for her hospital bills? Is that why he's so, so broke? Dude, I fucking love Stola so much. Cause I'm like pretty far ahead of like what you guys have seen for the reactions and uh, I love him so fucking much. He's the best. If you haven't got it by then, I'm afraid it might get a little hot around here. Cause I had to record ahead since we're moving soon. No, I will have everything ready, I promise. I love fire, you know. Oh yeah, FNAF emote too. I need to update the emotes, it's been a while. All right, maybe I should update the member tiers too, but the Kinjo Colt is so iconic. I don't know if I can, if I can let it go. I love fire, you know. I love the way it crackles. <laughs> no, 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 stop it, I beg of you. Then don't let me down. I'll be watching you. Is he owe her money? Is she related to Tiger? My snob, this is not necessary. You can trust me, mademoiselle. 
Oh my gosh, she's trying to burn down the restaurant? Talk to anyone and I'll drive a knife. What the world? Drive a knife right through your heart. No, no, you don't have to worry. You know, you worry far too much. Maybe this will help you relax. Is la oil of sandalwood? I don't want this bullshit. I do love raw meat from time to time. <laughs> Especially human meat. Oh! Oh, Jesus. I'll be talking, taking my leave. Goodbye for now. Oh, she was probably the fake waitress, right? During the, um... Uh, murder. She probably does work with a uh, tiger. Oh yeah, Bree, thanks for stopping by. Oh, I have a shivers. I must rub some of my oil of oil all over my body before I is before I become a nervous wreck. Is it? Oh, wait, wait. Is that feels good? <laughs> is he doing that while he's rubbing on the oil? Oh yes, oh yes. Watch me, Phoenix. Uh -huh. Oh la la, excuse me, Momozu. My eyes, my eyes. Your eyes, if you have trouble with your eyes, you need this. La oil of sandalwood. This isn't just leftovers of what, isn't this just leftovers of what you were using? Oh my goodness. Très bien. So you don't exactly have many customers, do you, Mr. Armstrong? No, you're right, Monsu. But perhaps that is the perfect time for you to visit me, no? That way I can give you my undivided attention and cook for you la de soupie. Putting on a brave face, huh? Oh, thank you, Brie, for being a member for 15 months. OMG, oh, we've met my husband, Godot. <laughs> Are you Godot simp too? I'm right there with you, Brie. I'm right there with you. I love him. He's so fun. <laughs> That's what girls do, Nick. But you are right, business is very difficult these days. Perhaps the name la is la problem? People do not understand ze, is it tre? I just wanted people to think that my restaurant was exclusive. But they think you serve fast food on cheap plastic trays. Nick, that's the kind of thing that can make a girl cry. Have you forgotten that? <laughs> okay, are these the jokes that people didn't like? Or this is why people didn't like Armstrong? I guess because people keep being like, Oh, is he a man? But he's so girly. Ha ha. Funny. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I guess this game's pretty old, but yeah, it's a little, <laughs> a little awkward. Most this restaurant, you know, they don't get you, Armstrong, but I get you and I support you for who you are. Thank you, Cooper Butter. Hi, Weeby. I finally figured out how to get on the Discord. I do that gift project, gift slash project. I did that gift slash project I made for you. Could you, could I DM you about it on Discord later? Yeah, sure. Um, I don't know if my Discord DM's open though. You might have to add me as a friend first. So if you just send me a friend invite, um, I can, yeah, you can send it to me after that. I will descend it to la finale. No one will take it from me. You know, everybody is just being poor, homophobic to poor Armstrong, but I love him. <laughs> I love him. The woman just now. Because at first I thought it was just the old man, but I was like, man, even Maya's like doing the comments. Like, <sighs> come on. So, who was that woman you were just talking to? Oh, la la, you saw that? Oh, uh, well, yes, yeah, sorry. Um, so who was she? She looked so polite and graceful. Polite? Graceful? And she likes raw meat and fires, right? And <laughs> my kind of woman. I'll be back next month. <laughs> we natural mint. I will be waiting for you. If you haven't got it by then, I'm afraid it might get a little hot around here. <laughs> no, I will have everything ready, I promise. Now that I think about it, hey, Maya, I think it's pretty clear what kind of conversation they were having. You think so? Well, then let's show him that piece of evidence and see what happens. Okay. Wait, that piece of evidence? Wait, what are we supposed to show him? <laughs> and the what now? <laughs> About this. Felicitations, my case, case, say the. Uh, je no comprehend. Uh, maybe the tiger meeting thing. Nick, don't just make something up. Yeah, see, see. <laughs> oh, god dang it, really? Huh, what am I supposed to show him? <laughs> just keep showing him shit. 
Um. Ah, it's true. My vases are broken all the time. I bought them the ones the next day after lying it in. But they wouldn't let me put it on the table because of La Investigation. Okay, is that it? I don't know, but anything. Nope. Yeah, it makes me sad because I like Armstrong, but yeah, it's like, man, I feel like they did just make him for like a homophobic jokes, which sucks. So. Please, monsieur, there is no need to show me that. You're a mon Phoenix Rice, the worst defense attorney in town. Oh yeah, I think I did already show that. Show it to this, uh... Show it, that to him. Man, okay. Oh, loan contract? Oh! Can I finally show him that? Oh my god, it's been so long. So long as that paper exists, I am but a delightful angel with a low broken wings. An angel, huh? Doesn't bode well when you think about it. Louise, they kept harassing me month after month. In the end, I had to give in. I agreed to help them. Help them? With what? My being sir, I did not owe them the money. If I did not owe them, owe them the money, I would have refused. But my hands were tied. Please, what did you agree to help them with? No, I cannot say. If I tell you that woman, she will slice me up and eat me with uh, la salad garnish. Oh, I hope he doesn't mean that he'll literally be sliced up and served with garnish. I'm going to guess that woman has something to do with your loan contract, am I right? Ah! I do like how he starts picking the flowers faster when he gets nervous. Please, Mr. Armstrong, tell us about that woman. Okay. The woman who was here earlier, I take it that she's, um... Why has it come to this? What a tragedy! Suddenly I find myself so deep in love that it is a sign of love bad world, bad, bad world we live in, huh? No, I'd say it's more of a sign of love bad, bad culinary skills. <laughs> the woman who was here, this scary woman, she is la lone officer. Loan office. Is that where you borrowed half a million dollars from? Oh, we tender lender. It is called. Oh yeah, I think that was on the papers too. Catchy name. Just hearing it makes me want to borrow some money. Please, you must not borrow money from them. If you must, no more than ten dollars. Ten dollars? Sounds like your whole monthly stipend, Maya. Hey! I get a bit more than that, thank you very much. <laughs> not for long. So tender lender is the loan office you borrowed a half a million from, huh? I wonder if they've got anything to do with this case. Tinder Linder. I am a weak woman. When I am upset, I have to buy something nice to cheer me up. Thanks to him loaning me la money, I have to pay back half a million dollars now. I am a slave. I have to do everything that they tell me. Um, who's he? La Tiger. The Tiger? We. Oui. He is the manager of the Tinderlander, a terrifying man, the big city monster! Bro, wait a second. If you know the tiger and you've already seen him before, how did you get tricked into thinking he was Phoenix Wright during the other case, the fake case, or the previous case that he defended Maggie on when he pretended to be him? Did he just, like, cover up his red skin? <laughs> he put, like, foundation on? Some, like, concealer to hide the redness of his skin? As soon as I hear a noise that battered old scooter rides, I start to cry. A big city mobster who rides a battered old scooter. Does this guy resemble me by any chance? Oh, no, no, no. This man has presence. A most formidable personality. Although, we... Does have less spiky hair just like you. Oui, there is a resemblance there, I suppose. Hum, sounds like this loan officer is worth checking out after all. Okay. If you want to visit the Tinderlander, this is beyond Vitamin Square. 
Um, yeah, hey Nick, if you need money, I can loan you some, as long as it's less than $3. <laughs> Thank you, Maya, for the very generous offer. Thanks for the offer. Just beyond Vitamin Square, huh? Okay, that seems like we got a new lead. Oh, good. Okay, well, I'm gonna head back to the precinct now. I've got a big meeting starting in a bit. About Maggie's case, you mean? No, that's pretty much wrapped up now. Yeah, what everybody was freaking out about earlier. There's another big case going down at the moment, so she's been pushed aside. Okay, we'll see you later then. Bye! Oh, he's back! <laughs> like I faded out the came out. Um, you better get going, detective, or you'll be late. Actually, I, um, I kind of got a favor to ask, a big one. Can you put a good favor, a good word for me in with, uh, what's-her-face? Because she hates me now. Favor? Yeah, it's for, uh, Maggie, actually. I was kind of hoping. Oh, did you make her something? You'd give this to her for me. Oh, that's so sweet! What is it? It's a lunchbox. I got up early. So oh my goodness! That's adorable, Gumshoe! I've been real worried about her. She looked like she'd lost a lot of weight. Detective Gumshoe! How many weenies are in here? There's not a person on earth who could down this much meat! You think? I love weenies. I can't get enough of their tender juiciness. <laughs> oh, at least said weenie and not wiener. <laughs> He's trying though, okay? It might be bad, but it's cute. So when you give it to her, it took me ages to make, so please say you will, pal. I can't exactly say no, can I? Come choose lunch lunchbox, given to Maya to carry. A tenderly handmade lunchbox, fills the stomach with love and plenty of weenies. <laughs> Maybe I'll eat it myself if I get hungry. Don't you dare! Don't forget, okay? I'm counting on you to give that to Maggie! Ah, oh, that's sweet. He's finally gone. He might be stupid, but he's nice. Okay. Tinder Linder! Went through compromise. Kind of reminds me of the mobsters and, um... I think it was Somnium Files. I feel like they had a similar kind of uh, area. Oh my god, is that his Phoenix Wright cosplay right there? <laughs> there it is! <laughs> what else is he dressing up as? This place gives off a really strange vibe, doesn't it? Looks like the tiger isn't in his lair. And that is, as they say, a very good thing. Welcome. Gulp. Talk about a creepy voice. It makes your soul want to shrivel up and die. It's the girl? Okay, yeah. You're here to discuss alone? Uh, no, not exactly. The manager is away at the moment. Wait quietly, please. <laughs> she's so weird. Um, she's gone, just like that, like a ghost. I guess we'll just have to come back another time. But this is the perfect opportunity, Nick, to steal some shit. This place reeks of suspicion. Come on, let's take a look around. Don't you think it'd be... Do you think it'd be okay? Of course! No one will ever know! Coffee? <laughs> I'm here... I'll know. Oh god! I'll leave it here for you to enjoy, quietly. Yes! Thank you! Do not touch the desk, please. <laughs> Nick! Let's get out of here! <laughs> now she wants to get out of here! <laughs> now I want to examine! Okay, people are saying to examine the suits. Hey, look at this parrot Frisian style coat. It's so chic. Looks like something a pimp- looks like a pimp coat to me. I guess I haven't got an eye for fashion. Hey, look at this! The suit is the same color as the one that you wear, Nick! Um, the same color as my suit. Hmm. Hmm. Keep your voice down, Maya! Nick, you gotta take an- Oh, some cake? Oh my god! Oh my god! I'll just leave this here for you to enjoy. Um, yeah, sure. I, um, thanks. <laughs> just wait here quietly otherwise. I'm sure! Did you hear that, Nick? Wait quietly, she said! Yeah, sure, you're the one screaming! I have my eye on you. 
only so I can take care of you. Understand? <laughs> oh my god, her voice is getting more and more Kanade every second. I'm scared, Nick! So, what were you getting so excited about before? Look on the lapel of the suit. Oh, I found my goodness. A little fake attorney's badge made of cardboard. That's an attorney's badge. It looks even worse than yours. Is the tiger a lawyer? No way, look at this thing. It's made of paper. Paper badge added to the court record. Found the Tinder lender, made of cardboard, painted to look authentic. For some reason, your badge just suddenly looks really cheap to me, Nick. Why doesn't anybody recognize an obviously fake badge when they see one? Okay, I'm saving, because that girl scares me. <laughs> I'm scared that she's gonna kill me. Okay, let's look, click on this, looks important. Oh no, someone's dropped the ashtray on the floor. It's going to be a nightmare to clean up. Yeah, it's all over the rug and everything. I actually knocked over a really big space heater once. Cleaning up was such a pain. It was one of those super antiques where you have to burn a ton of charcoal. How did she manage to knock one of those over? Aren't they supposed to be super heavy? Oh, hey! There's a book of matches in here, too. Travian. Matches? Is they dedicated for Travian when she decides to burn it down later? Matches, huh? Please don't give that... Places don't give those out nowadays. Hey, wait a second. What is it? Look what's printed on its cover. It says Travian. They sell matches there? Travian matches. Matches used for advertising. Found lying in the Tinder lender. It's such a random thing <laughs> to sell for advertising. These matches could come in handy. We might be able to use them. Yeah. The pilot light for the office spoiler keeps going out. Swing and a miss, Maya. A swing and a miss. Okay. And a radio. What's he listen to? Brittany? It's Brittany, bitch. There is a CD player on the desk. The desk is so loud. It's a wonder you can't hear it. The lid's open. I wonder what kind of music the tiger is into. Have you finished the coffee? Oh, God! Yes, thanks. It was lovely. <laughs> so, you drink it all? <laughs> <laughs> there may be a little potassium cyanide in there. <laughs> oh god. I'm gonna go vomit it up. If you touch anything else that doesn't belong to you, there's always another cup. <laughs> uh, that coffee was laced with something I'm sure of it. Nick, my stomach is killing me. Oh, wait. Maybe it was just the burger I ate for breakfast. Why did you eat a burger for breakfast? I sure hope so. Better take a look at that CD while we're still alive and have the chance to. What the? What? It's not the Rocco soundtrack, is it? Claw of the Tiger? <laughs> it's a demo CD. Oh my god, it's his CD. Oh no, actually, MC Ham, not MC Hammer. <laughs> MC Boomer? I can't remember what it was. The artist's name has been handwritten on the disc in the pen. MC Bomber. What? This, music, this must be the CD Maggie told us about. Let's listen to it. I bet it's heavy metal. No way. That woman will make us drink more coffee if we do. MC Bomber. Add to the court record. Ah! Oh, he's here, actually. Does he do this every time he enters a building? Does he try to growl like a tiger, too? Come out from under the desk, Maya. Was you too snooping around my office for? Nothing. We were just Wah! my precious carpet. You has got ash on my rug. You gotta wish your ugly feet never came through my door. It wasn't us. It's you who wanna argue with me. Is that what you're doing? You think you can take me out? <laughs> I like how he does it with tongue. I'm gonna flatten you two to pancakes and turn you into my new rugs. Oh, God! Oh, don't tigre, tigre, you're back. Oh, that voice, it's the evil seeping into your head through your ears. These are some weird-ass villains, man. <laughs> They're so comically evil. I'm sorry, Don Tigre. I knocked over that ashtray earlier and... Eek, has she got a death wish or what? This is okay when me little girl does it. All right. What? Forget about it, Violetta. It's nothing. What? What? 
I ain't gonna get mad at you. You're too cute, you hear? That's so unfair. Here, have some cookies. I just baked them. And you'll need some strong espresso while you're discussing your loan. Whoa! Phoenix right. Yes! You see the crazy or just plain stupid to chase after me. I was so hard, but now you has gotta come and mess up my plan. So it was him. He is my phony. Heh. <laughs> but I don't care. No one gets in my way. <laughs> what I mean, excuse me? Hey, <laughs> You should've left the little girl at home, right? Um... Have a girl! Oh my god! No questions, this is the last time we meet. Okay. <laughs> cool. Wait, is that whole desk made out of gold and other thing about it? It's so sparkly. Wait, please! That was pretty weak, Nick. You waited until he was out of earshot before you shouted after it. Like, you're one to talk, I didn't hear you scream, hold it either. The espresso. Oh god! And cookies. This woman definitely is definitely not good for my heart. Now, what was it the tiger called her? Violetta? Ah, I can talk to her? Oh my god, Slay, I love her. So, I'm kind of curious about your company, Tinderlinder. More of her and less of the old man. With the warm and friendly atmosphere you'd expect from a family sized business, a consensus rate of interest in an attractive repayment policy. Well, I don't get the feeling the sentence is not going to end well. We will tenderly lend you that little bit extra here at the Tinder Lender. Hey, Nick, things are a bit tight for Ride Co. at the moment, aren't they? I mean, girl, do you really think we should get money from here? If we're going to lend money, we should at least go somewhere else. This girl probably poisoned her coffee. Why don't you take out a loan? Would I like to take out a loan from a place like this? Do I get the choice? Hell no. Not so much. Tinder Lender is on your side. <laughs> so let's say I'm late with the repayment. What happens then? We give you more coffee. Strong coffee. I would love this place. Right, I think I'd rather skip town. Hey, just remember, I can make strong coffee too, Nick. Strong tea as well. What happened? So, do you know about the incident we're investigating? What, a little old me? Never! I have no clue! Well, a man was poisoned in a restaurant just near here, that incident. Let me see, she is so corpse girl coded, honestly. I was here that day with the manager. The manager being the tiger. Um, Furio Tigre. Furio? What kind of name is that? Tigre? So that's where the tiger thing comes from. Zen Epop's got a real name, Nick. Hurry up and find out more about him. Oh, was the, um, I guess like those names that you can flip backwards was just like a reference to Maya's joke. The fact that she like was making fun of, um, what's his face? Oh, hey, do I have a profile of him now? Yes, I do. <laughs> He's so meme looking. <laughs> oh man, what was I gonna say? Um, I don't know if I have anything else to present to her. Oh, would she get pissed if I present that to her? I'm saving in case she tries to kill me. I was in the middle of saying something, but I don't remember what it was. About this. More coffee? You must have more. No, thanks! I've had enough! I'm so thirsty. I don't leave the office. I can't tell you about anything except Don Tigre! Okay, uh, ask about him then. Can I ask you about the tiger? I mean, Mr. Tigre. Cookie? Um, no, girl, don't take the cookie! How do you like my cookies? I baked them myself. <laughs> Go ahead, Nick, the honor is all yours. No, no, ladies first, Maya! <laughs> no matter how I look at this, I just don't get it. What are the tiger and the scary girl working together? What are the tiger and the scary girl doing working together? Oh. We are lovers. Oh, she's kind of young to me. 
That's not exactly coming across in your tone of voice. And I owe Dot Tigray my life. He's the one who saved me. So she is just like a yandere. The tiger saved you. Please address him properly as Don Tigre. Otherwise, I'll have to make some more copy. Okay, okay. Don Tigre, of course. I'm sorry. He saved her life. I'm sure I'd like I'd sure like to know how that happened. Okay, can I talk to her about it now? Saved your life. I'm very frail, you see. I feel like it was probably like a fake saving sort of situation. Just recently, <laughs> I died. <laughs> I died once. <laughs> it was crazy. I went to hell. I met Charlie. I saw Lucifer. I sang with a husk, and then I got re then I got revived. <laughs> you died about four months ago. The doctor said to abandon all hope. I guess they were expecting her to take a boat ride across the river Styx. But Don Tigre, he saved me. He gave up everything. Everything? When I found out what he had done for me, I... I was happy. Can you kill some people so you get the money to save her? No offense, but I'm finding that a little hard to believe. I decided I'd pay him back with my life by serving him coffee and espresso. I still wonder about what's in her coffee. So is that why you've got a bandage around your head? <laughs> this. The head bandage. Um, so what's the story with the bandage? They put it on after the operation. Operation? Do you have like brain cancer or something? It's just a little injury. A little fatal injury. <laughs> a fatal injury? Maya just suffered one herself by the sound of it. So that's the injury you were talking about before you said you had died once. Oh, god dang it. More of these, man? Oh my god, girl! Four. I guess it makes sense. She do be sketchy. Sketchy as hell. Ugh, she really creeps me out, Nick. Same here, but we've got to find out the truth. Okay. What if I can examine some more? I'm kind of scared. <laughs> I'm like low-key scared too, though. What's this? It's a punching bag. Looks like they punched a hole through it. What? No way! You wouldn't catch me walking around with a bag like that. Oh, uh, what are you? God, she thinks she thinks like a purse. Design's gross to start with it. It's way too heavy to be practical. And that's why it's called a punching bag. Don't people know messenger bags are in? I knew it. I was right before. Back at Trevion. Paris fashion is more my thing. I really, really hope she's pulling my chain on this one. <laughs> Surely. That's one impressive desk on one impressive rug. It's solid gold, Nick. Gold. I had a feeling. Look at that shine. Only real gold shines like that! I mean, it has plenty of money. You don't have to kill anybody for uh, any more money, but I guess he doesn't want to give up the the simple, the things, I guess the luxuries in life that he already has. Would you really want such a shiny dust, though? I don't know, but let's see. What if it's it's like to sit at a... I wonder what it's like to sit at a gold desk. Girl, don't do it. Oh, wow, I'm completely dazzled! The girl in the <laughs> by all in the corner. <laughs> become completely dazzling. I need you some more copy, Maya, for sitting in my boss's desk. I can see up my nose in the reflection. That's gotta be really distracting. So the desk isn't practical. No surprise here. What are these guys called again? Let's see this round doll thing. Darima, that's what it was. It's called a Darima, I think. I figured I'd read a, I figured I'd read a book or two and be more cultured in case you're wondering. I mean, you are making stuff up for a change. <laughs> I bet you also didn't know that. No matter what, he'll always write himself. Go on, Nick. Give him a good shove. Only if I feel like dying. Now this yellow thing. This is a Japanese chess piece. I think it's a king? Okay. No, not that I'm an expert or anything. I'm more of a reverse person, you know? Assuming she knows what she's talking about. These aren't exactly your typical mobster wannabe items. They're not trophies, are they? <laughs> Golf. <laughs> Like things from the victims. Hey, there's a piece of paper sticking out from under here. Oh, what is it? A repair bill? Looks like he did some repair work on his car. Does he even have one? <laughs> Wait, is it for the stupid scooter? 15k to replace a bumper to light. That's insane. The car is registered to the Cada Cadaverinis. The Cadaverinis. Sounds like a 
goth band or something. Ah, so it's not even the tiger's car. Why would someone else's repair bill be in the tiger's office? Okay, interesting. Paid by Tigre to the Cadaverini. Oh, Cadaverini family? That's their last name? I guess she was like, well, I just have to have this aesthetic because... <laughs> Because, um, I was born into the family Cadaverini. Okay, I guess the last thing is this, uh, quote. Win through compromise. I wonder what that's supposed to mean. Must mean something if they took the trouble to frame it like that. Oh. Yeah, well, it still doesn't make any sense to me. <laughs> that... Oh, God! <laughs> That's Tinderlender's guiding principle. Seems kind of like a nice principle considering, like, I don't know how sketchy their business seems to be. Oh. Compromise the customer. Oh, comfort, never mind. <laughs> Compromise the customer to win. <laughs> oh, I see. How about you, Nick? Yeah, um, well, as long as we don't have to compromise my hair, I'd say we're okay. That's one slogan no business owner should ever explain to their customers. <laughs> Okay, let's see if I can, um, break what's her faces. Uh, lock. Oh, hey! Oh, God, no. No. No! <laughs> no more! He's so pointless! We don't need to see him! <laughs> Thank you! Zephy Kelsey was picturing a Mikado voice, but creepier for Viola. I went with Kanade. I just like the Kanade voice is so fun to do. <laughs> but I can see that working, too. And Thank you for being a member for 13 months. There he is, old CD's back, feeding the pigeons again. There, take this and this, and get out of my park! Like I thought, he's really mad. Come on, Maya, just keep your head down and sneak away while we can, yes! What, why, hello? Old man? What are you doing, Maya? Naya, please, no, huh? Gah! He just turned his back on us, as I'm, I'm okay with that. I've accepted it, I'm good with that. I'm not surprised. I bet I really heard his pride in court this morning. Hey, Mr. Kudo! Ha hum! Oh, pee pee pigeon! Ka! Look, we really need to talk to you, do we? Alright! Ow, we the demons! In God's fortune! Ow, ow! Oh my God, see! It's shell splinter! It's painful! I always knew you were a demon, Maya. Oh, God. Ugh. What is there to talk to him about? There's nothing left. I just wanted to do the other stupid psyche lock. Today's trial. Sorry about what happened in court earlier today. Tell everybody, everyone will be talking about me behind my back now. A dirty old man who was busy looking at the serving girl's backside. And he can't even remember her face. A filthy, depraved animal. Well, if the shoe fits, like... Let's be for real. <laughs> kind of be like that. No, no, bestie, no. Nobody thinks that. Really. Uh, <laughs> I can't convince you. I can't even convince myself. Are you Are you listening to me, boy? I don't care what you say. I saw that waitress put it in. She put some white powder in the young lad's jabuccino. We hear you. And another thing, the young layabout was wearing an earpiece on the same side of the lens of his broken spectacle. We hear you. We're really sorry. It starts with sorry. So I made a little mistake about the vase. So what? I know what I saw. I tell you, I tell you what. Okay, take it easy, please. You're gonna have a card attack if you keep going. Don't tell me to take it easy, you spunky hair and brat. Take this. Okay, embroidery. <laughs> Um, you said you're a craftsman, right? Cow, the modern world cats on its craftsmen like me aside in droves. Oh man, voice starting to hurt from doing this old man's voice. Surely it's not that. I come from a long line of craftsmen right back to the time of the shoguns. You hear me, I didn't become an embroiderer, I was born one. Actually, I'm kind of in the same situation myself. Ah, uh, ah! Uh, I want to stick my fingers up that dribbling old judge's nose and scream right down his ear hole. Objection! 
Oh, so you did want to become a lawyer when you were younger. I don't think that's quite it, Maya. I think he's just in a bad mood, that's all. I've got a tsunami of frustration inside and it's ready to burst out! If we let him start rambling now, he might never shut up. He might never shut up. What should I do? Cut in. No, cut in! Actually, we've got places to go. Things to check and stuff. Maybe another time. Fine, whatever! Just don't forget, I got a tsunami's worth of gremlin do! Yes, yes, well, we're, <laughs> this girl right here is really looking forward to hearing it all, honest. She can stay here and I'll go interview the pretty robot lady. What? I never said that! Come to the place where I work then. Here, bring this along with you! What is this? It's a cupboard and see. It's a discount coupon for a burger. Oh yeah, he was working there. He really wants someone to grumble at, huh? Although it is a burger joint. Okay. Oh. I can- oh god, I can get more options. I guess just in case there's anything else left. Let's see what happens when you suck it up. Guess I better let him talk. So, there's not much call for craftsmen these days, huh? Of course not, you idiot! I'm good for now- uh, All I'm good for nowadays is running errands! Errands? Everyone takes advantage of the elderly. Buy some bread, gramps, take the dog for a walk, granddad. Feed the pigeons, old man. What am I, some sort of two-bit community handyman? Um, well... Buy some bread, now that I can understand. What's the point of feeding some seedy pigeons? Why do people say what they mean? Get lost, that's what they're trying to- That's what I'm trying to say. Oh yeah, I'm just an inconvenience, you see? At home, at that restaurant, I just get in the way, don't I? I'm sure, I'm sure you do. <laughs> so, so he's like, I kind of feel bad for the fact that he has so much self-hatred, but he does suck. So I'm also kind of like, <laughs> Wait a minute, what did he just say? At home and at that restaurant. Hold up, by restaurant, are you talking about Trey Beyond? Do you mean that you run an, you get asked to run an errand there too? Yeah, I did, the very day that young brat was poisoned. What? <laughs> What the fuck? <laughs> so the day of the incident, what were you asked to do? Glad you asked, boy, because I tell you what I was asked to do. All of a sudden, that young lad slumped over the table. The serving girl collapsed. And I broke that vase. It all happened so fast. I was in a bit of a daze, you see? Then the owner shouted over to me. Excuse me, are you? Call the police. Call them yourself. I should have... Said the call them yourself, I should have said back, but I didn't think of it at the time. So, did you end up calling the police? Like I said, I was in a bit of a daze. Did you call them on your cell phone? God, do I look like I have one of those newfangled thingamajigs? Oh, do you have to leave the building to go to like a payphone or something? I went out looking for a payphone, of course. So then that was plenty of time for like uh, the tiger and stuff to plant the evidence and everything. <laughs> Okay, so I think I probably figured out what happened. So the tiger and Viola are like the real murderers and I think I'm um, what's his face? I think Jean assisted and that was I guess maybe supposed to be like a repayment for like um, the money that he owes kind of like oh if you help us in this like murder case um, You can um, you know we can pay you we can like you know say it's like in your quota or whatever in what you owe us I guess it is 500k too, which is exactly what he owes, but I don't think he would have known that prior to like, um, uh, Elga or whatever his name entering the building, right? Because, uh, he was listening to the radio when it happened, so he had like just won, I think, the lotto, right? You went looking for me? I couldn't find one right away, you know, walk around for five minutes or so. Five minutes? So for five minutes after the incident happened, and did you just give us good info? I know, right? <laughs> yes, sorry, the owner was at Travion on his own. Why didn't you mention this in court this morning? Well, I would if you'd given me a chance. But you all bully me out of the courtroom. Sorry, thank you, Mr. Kudo. You've certainly earned your kudos. Wait, wait a minute, that's I got more to say! Remember something else? Oh, is that? <laughs> he finally had something good to say, and that's when we kicked him out. It's not my fault. You're the one to blame. You could have at least told us before we got to court. 
Is it really that important that Mr. Kudo was the one who called the police? What's important is the unaccounted time before the police arrived. Yeah, exactly. The victim was dead, and Maggie was unconscious. Which leaves that woman... <sighs> Phoenix, not you two. Ugh, <laughs> oh, these jokes, dude. Those Rakudos might have been chased out of the place on purpose. What do you mean? Maybe a certain someone didn't want him in the restaurant. Ah! Oh, sure, you go ahead and say I was in the way as usual. I suppose I should have been getting myself covered in pigeon poop instead, huh? We need to get more details about what exactly happened from Maggie and from Mr. Armstrong. Okay. I wonder, can I even do the thing with the robot lady yet? Since uh, it seems like we still got so much more uh, going on. Do, 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 do. Oh wait, that's not what I meant to do. I don't know if he's still in the kitchen. Oh yeah, okay, here we go. Looks like Mr. Armstrong's out again. Okay, never mind. The place is open for business. You can't have an open restaurant without a chef. Hey, it's not my fault, Nick. Don't take it out on me. Only a couple of minutes after the incident happened, Mr. Kudo left the scene, leaving Mr. Armstrong here alone. It was like the others that were obviously here though too, like uh, during it, but like I guess it's just that like they didn't realize cause like that one girl was disguised as Maggie. And then I don't really know what's up with Tiger. Oh yeah, he just like hid behind the partition, I think. Maybe he's trying to avoid us on purpose. Okay, maybe I will try, uh, what's her face? Let me see if I can. I at least have the profile now, so. It's just Phoenix's internalized homophobia <laughs> that made him say that. <laughs> that was it. What did Mr. Elk's troubles? Did Mr. Elk's troubles have something to do with this? It was a horse racing thing for this one. Take that! Take that. Alice Gimli wasn't restricted to horse races. It was the Lotto, too! No! How are you guys doing? The real problem was just with, was with someone or something more terrifying. Oh yeah, this. Take that! <laughs> queen coded. <laughs> How can anything be so homophobic and queen coded at the same time? I got what you meant, queer coded, but it's kind of funny. Queen coded. <laughs> I like it. Mr. Elg went with someone on the day he was killed. He even made a note on his calendar about the meeting. Meet with the tiger. What is the relevance of that? Are you trying to suggest that Glenn was with him to discuss his debt? I cannot believe it. I just now realized I have not made one single Glenn Coco joke by the fact that the victim's name was Glenn. What is wrong with me? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. But I have never heard anything about this tiger before. Maybe he's not even human. Maybe he really is tiger. Let me introduce you to the tiger. <laughs> if me and Donald Trump had a child. Frio Tigre, aka the Tiger, is the boss of a loan office called Tinderlinder. This is who Mr. Elg met with on the day of his murder. And only and the only thing a loan shark would talk to him with about was his debt. No! It's true that Glenn had racked up quite a bit of debt from his gambling habit. About a hundred K, I think. Okay, that was why he wrote a hundred K on here. And then there was the 500, which I guess is what he won, I guess. I don't know. A hundred K dollars, ouch. I heard he won lottery, so he should have been in the clear. Shame Maggie couldn't get a bit of that good luck. Okay, so the guy got lucky and won the lottery, but what if he hadn't won? What if his plan- what was his plan then? Um, well, this isn't easy to say, but he said he would use his talents to repay the money. His talents? I suspect he was talking about programming. What computer programming is worth 100k? I think I know a lot. 
Perhaps you good people should leave so I can get back to my work. So close to cracking her. The program in question wasn't by any chance. This! Oh, we need a program on us? Was it MC Bomber? Was it Gumshoe's Lunchbox? I don't fucking know. <laughs> well, I guess it could technically be this, right? Because it doesn't have to be like a mixtape. They did say something about like, um, whatchamacallit, like, um, programs and music can be on CDs. So I think it, I still think it is, even though it's kind of saying, it's seeming like it's wrong right now. Without the necessary data, there's no real way I can access the information. Damn it. I knew Mr. L created some sort of program, but she can't deny it if I show the program itself as evidence. I'm so close. Do I not have the program yet? I felt so sure that was it. I must not have the program, unless... I feel like... I don't know, I feel like it is this, but she just doesn't want to take it, honestly. Okay. I don't think I have enough that... God lord, this is gonna take forever to crack her, man. Okay, we can move on, I guess. Um, I wonder if I can give Maggie her uh, weenies. Yay! Oh, Mr. Wright! Hello, Maggie. So they finished questioning you. Wasn't I just unbelievable in court today, sir? I'm going to stay up all night and blog about everything that happened. You're in prison now. Weren't you scared? It was pretty touch and go in there. Yeah, but you totally nailed that old man. Well, he was all over the place with his testimony. He's not the only one. Huh? What do you mean? Everyone else's testimonies don't match up either. Not with what I remember of the incident anyways. Is it possible? She's the one misremembering things. Okay. Wait, no. I don't want to do the contradictions. I want to give you the weenies. Because that was really cute. Please like it. Oh yeah, I've got something you're gonna love. Really? What is it? A lunchbox, just for you. Here. It is kind of a sad lunchbox. <laughs> Literally just rice and weenies. <laughs> Not a single vegetable. Not a single vegetable, gumshoe. Wow, lunchbox. Weenies, too. Is that her favorite? I can't believe it. Thank you, sir. Did you make this just for me, Mr. Wright? Nah, it was Detective Gumshoe. Who else would make such a nice lunchbox for you? Detective Gumshoe. He's really worried about you. It looks like he put a lot of effort into making this, too. Ah, oh, is she gonna forgive him? No! Damn it! Oh, no! I can't accept it. Decisions in her rules. No gifts allowed, sir. Hey, come on, Maggie! Don't be like that! The rules are the rules. They'll lock you up if you break them. Somehow, when an ex-cop turned waitress says that, it seems a whole lot more scary. In any way, I hate weenies. You didn't seem like you did. Really? You seem kind of excited. It's all yours, Maya. You can enjoy it with Mr. Right. But... Oh, so sad. She's right. It's better than letting it go to waste. But... I, I guess so. Gumshoe's lunchbox eaten with Maya. No! It's so sad! Oh man. Well, how was it? That hit the spot. I love weenies. Oh, we know. <laughs> we know, Phoenix. Oh, good. I'm glad I gave it to you then. Aw, she looks sad though, still. Okay, contradictions. Maggie, you know you said you know how you said that everyone else provided a testimony that doesn't match up with what you remember? Yep, there are just so many things that I don't seem to that don't seem to add up. The biggest contradiction is the other guy I saw at the victim's table. He was the one who slipped something into the victim's coffee. I'm sure it was him. But didn't Mr. Kudo testify earlier today that it wasn't the waitress who put some white powder in the coffee? That it was the waitress. Well, I guess they could have both put it in the coffee, maybe? So you really think it was this disappearing man that did it? Um, well, he's not the only thing that disappeared. The CD vanished as well. You know the CD with the writing on it? Oh yeah, the MC Screwdriver album, right? Sorry, I need some water. It was MC Bomber, Maya. That name was scrawled, scrawled on the sports paper as well. They never did find that CD at the crime scene, sir. 
Or the victim's medication. That's gone missing too. Ouch, my head. This is getting way too complicated for me. <clears throat> After the incident. You said you passed out when the victim, Glenn Elg, collapsed, right? Yeah, it's so embarrassing. I mean, I used to be a cop. When I came to, the restaurant was buzzing with police. And before I knew what was going on, they arrested me, sir. So between the time the victim collapsed and the time the police arrived on the scene, you have no idea what went on at Trabian. No, no idea at all. Why? Is it important, Mr. Wright? The other witness, the old man from the park, was pretty much chased out of the picture. Chased out of the picture? What do you mean? Old CD wasn't inside the restaurant because he got told to call the police. Exactly, and you, Maggie, were unconscious. That means Mr. Armstrong was alone in the restaurant for a brief period of time. No! You don't think Mr. Armstrong set me up, do you? When you consider the facts, it's hard to imagine that Mr. Armstrong isn't involved in this at all, literally. <laughs> Owes the exact money the lotto ticket is worth. Kurt, it's like the master biting the paw of the dog that it feeds. I feel like, is this the first time we've had, like, I don't know, like a killer who also has, like, a bunch of other people working with him? Are they all gonna go to jail? Because I feel like we haven't had any, um, whatchamacallit, like, cases with multiple uh, perpetrators. Are you sure about this, Mr. Wright? Well, the old man said as much when we spoke to him earlier. I don't know, the things that man says don't add up for some reason, sir. Maggie looks like she's trying to figure out something. Maybe we should ask Maggie exactly what she knows about old CD. What has he done to you, Maggie? How creepy has he been? I feel much better after the trial this morning. I've been a bit of a I've been in a bit of a courtroom proceedings addicts for years now. It feels like forever since I saw a witness as slippery as that old man. He's not really that bad of an old man though, right? Still, I feel a bit uneasy. Huh? I thought you just said you felt much better. Maggie. Maggie. If there's something on your mind, you've got to tell us. Especially if it has anything to do with Mr. Kudo or his testimony. Roger, I'll spill it all and see what you make of it. Okay. Victor's testimony. Is there anything about Mr. Kudo's testimony that stood out as odd to you? Actually, yes. The fact that he was even testifying to begin with doesn't quite... Doesn't quite what? Well, when I took the coffee over to the victim's table... It's true there was another customer in the restaurant. Yeah, we know that already. It was Mr. Victor Kudo, but I can't really say it was an old man. Okay, then how about calling him a really old middle-aged man? <laughs> I don't think that's left less offensive. No, age isn't the issue. The other customer was... A woman. Oh, what the... A woman? Are you sure, Maggie? Well, I'm not 100% sure, but I think so. So what did this woman look like? Um, she was sort of creepy. She was, oh, what's her face, Viola? And she had this kind of cackling laugh. Creepy? Cackling? Well, I don't get the feeling I've come across a woman like that recently. Okay, I wonder if we can present her profile. Oops, keep pressing the wrong button. I know I used to be on the police force, sir, but I'm incarcerated now, so I can't use my connections to help you. All I can tell you about now is info about ex-cons or the clientele of Trabian, sir. Ah, oh, I don't want to get you down, Maggie. Okay, well, maybe not. Maybe we have to go talk to her again, I guess? Maybe. Is it by Vitamin Square, I think? Oh god, not you. <laughs> no. <laughs> not you! The head bandage, no. It's like, maybe we could talk to her, uh, I don't know. Nah, I probably can't show her that stuff. So we could potentially? Hmm. What about profiles? She's not gonna admit to being there though, right? About this. More coffee, I must have more. More, more! Oh yeah, criminal defense. They're having like a meeting or something. Do, do, 
Do, do. Oh man, it's a lot of uh, places this time. <laughs> the main server went up in smoke. Why the heck isn't the press conference set up yet? The superintendent's here already. Yeah, there's a problem with the internet too. I already told you to stop using your computer, Chief. But I'm watching videos online. I'm trying to catch up on my Asian soap operas. It's gonna have to wait, Chief. I'm throwing the switch. No! Just when some young Jai was about to confess to his hot son's hot to trot girlfriend. Wait, what? <laughs> wait, what? He was about to confess to his son's girlfriend. <laughs> wait, wait. I gotta, I gotta re uh, hear the plot of that show. Wow, this place is really buzzing. Something must be going down. Something really big. Uh, what are you doing here, pal? Detective Gumshoe! You can't be here right now. You'll be roped into the briefing you if you stay. Huh? We've got a big problems here today. Why? What's going on? It's a virus! A virus! A virus. There's... Oh! Somebody from blue screens? Weird. Weird. It's a virus ripping through the precinct's computer system. But I really need to ask you some questions. Okay. I might, uh, actually, I might quit here. Uh, I am getting kind of tired, and we haven't gone for a while. So I think, uh, we can just continue next time. I think we'll probably just finish the investigation and then, uh, do the trial and maybe start, I guess, some of the fourth case, too. But, uh, yeah, I'll be at my new apartment by the next time we, uh, stream, I think. Because, <laughs> yeah, I don't think I'll be able to stream next weekend. I was like, somebody thought about just leaving my desk here on Sunday and that I could stream and then move all of that on Monday. But I'm not totally sure if I'll do that or not. Or if I'll be able to. It kind of just depends. So, uh, don't get your hopes up too much for a stream next week. But hopefully, that'd be cool. But, yeah, uh, say goodbye to Chair Coon. He's dying. He's gone. Um, he will be executed very soon. And he'll miss you all. <laughs> He'll miss you all. Actually, he won't because he's an inanimate object. But you guys will all miss him, and that'll be very, very sad. But yeah, um, I'm enjoying this case, I think, for the most part. Besides the homophobic jokes, I'm enjoying it. Um, I figure that could be a big reason why people don't really care for this case, honestly. Since, uh, yeah, that's a little, that's a little off-putting for sure. But, um, otherwise I'm enjoying, uh, just, like, the mystery of it and stuff. I guess it's, like, not necessarily, like, super mysterious, because, like, we already kind of know who did it. It's just kind of, like, convincing the judge, you know what I mean, <laughs> about it. Like, I guess it's kind of it, but I do enjoy some of the silliness of it. But, yeah, uh, I will see you guys next time. And, yeah, I'll have two more Hell of a Boss episodes going up later this week and uh, maybe i'll watch the trailer for amazing digital circus i don't know if i have time <laughs> i feel like i have so much stuff going on right now but i'll definitely react to the full episode when that comes out on may uh, 3rd but yeah thanks guys for coming by i appreciate you and i'll see you next time